lost in the breeze and I was aiming for the stars messed up and shattered my head Welcome to the IDP Show. I'm your host, Josh Raymer, joined in the Soul Shack tonight. On my right, Adam Markham. On my left, Bobby Reynolds. Gentlemen, how are we this evening? Doing very well, Joshy. How you might. The season is here, Bobbo. It's about time your Rammies kick off on Thursday against the Bills. Yeah, can't wait. It's going to be a good season, boys. Can't wait, man. We got real football. We're going to have real stats to talk about. We're actually going to be able to... You know, get waiver wire ads and make mm. trades and put players in and get points. <laughs> Golly! It's a whole off season of just talking about what happened and all the guys that you're getting. And now mm. we finally get to like see how poorly we did with all this off season work. Mm-hmm. It's kind of soul crushing a little bit. Hey, put up a shop time. That's right. <laughs> Let's see if you uh, measure up, Bobo. Is the uh, the game's probably in L.A. right? Buffalo yes, in September yes. doesn't sound. The, the champs great. always host. I think oh. there was one year that, uh, I think it was the year Baltimore won maybe, and there was a Katy Perry concert or something at the stadium. And mm. so they had to do, it was like uh, Ravens Broncos, and they had to be at Denver because Baltimore Stadium had already sold out for this concert. I'm like, oh, wow. way to get cucked by K- <laughs> Katy Perry in your Super Bowl Kind of, uh, you know, rematch type of game. I bet that was a great show, though. Yeah, but it was a great show. I mean, she puts on a hell of a show. I think Ozzy Osbourne is the halftime show. Of the Thursday night game. Oh, nice. Is he really? I'm sure I saw that somewhere. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Ozzy? Ozzy. Like, I would think, like, maybe something L.A. Like, I don't think L.A. and Ozzy Osbourne. He's got to live out there somewhere. Yeah. He seems very California. Lives in a haunted ca- castle upside down <laughs> like a bat. Yeah. Are you uh, Are you worried about old Staffy's elbow? I'm concerned. Boy, we'll, I'm concerned. We'll talk about our predictions tonight, but uh, they will be indicative of how far I think the Rams go this year. QB1 and uh, the XFFL, Matt Stafford. I've got Allen Robinson, so I've got a nice little mm. stack there, and I'm like, boy, this could I go could, south. I could mm-hmm. see this going like week six. It's like Stafford is going to sit out a week. Yeah. He should be fine for the rest of the season, but they're going to rest the elbow. Yeah. That just feels like it's coming down the pipe. Yeah. In my home league, I had the choice of, uh, it was super flex. So I had the choice of Stafford or David Carr, um, Derek Carr. There yeah. is a da- David. Yeah. Derek's his brother, right? He was in Derek the Carr. Texas. Yes. I really had to think about that. I yeah. know. Yeah. Derek Carr. Uh, went with Carr just because I'm worried about Stafford's elbow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm concerned, you know, kind of what triggered me to it was Sig's pod, I don't know, it's been several months ago where he was like, Stafford got an injection in his elbow in like April. That's not normal. Mm-hmm. Like, this is concerning. Yeah, that was Matt Waldman talking about that and, on the Audible. And if the Rams don't figure out what they're doing at running back, then Stafford's going to be asked to throw the ball 50 times every single game. Oh, it's going to be a committee, I think, from everything I'm hearing. I think the Rams could really struggle this year. In a bad world. I mean, they still have talented players, but I, I could see them starting like two and four, just like Super Bowl hangover. Dude, I think the Bills could drum them on Thursday. I think it'll be yeah. a close game just because it's, you know, first game of the season. The Rams mm-hmm. haven't played. That's always interesting to me. Like, boy, the Bills are so much better, though. Oh, they yeah. really are. Yeah. I mean, that team, Von, I forgot it's like Von Miller mm-hmm. against the Rams. Von like, Miller back, Greg Rousseau, boy. second year. You seen the Monday night game? It's pretty good too, isn't Seattle it? Seattle and uh, oh Denver. Let's ride. Yeah, Seattle. Wow, that's gonna be not. Fun. In, I'm not thrilled about Seattle in prime time, I'm but at least saying, we get the Russell the Wilson. Yeah, homecoming game. We don't get the uh, the twofer on Monday night. That's not a thing anymore. Maybe I don't know. I don't think so. I always no. enjoyed that. That was always that was a great always time. fun. Yeah, to stay up to like one a.m. Two things. Speaking of the Manning cast, is it this Monday? Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah. Secondly, as far as Mannings go, I almost bought a life-size stand-up Manning I saw on Facebook Marketplace the other day just to put oh, that'd it in been here perfect. somewhere. But wow. he didn't have his jersey on. He was like khaki. It was he just like, like John Harbaugh. Casual, It'd be actually better. Yeah, business or Peyton Jack Manning. Harbaugh. Is that still out there? I would only is, get I would only get, get the Peyton Manning <laughs> if it had the red, <laughs> like, like Marv from Home Alone, iron imprint on the forehead. This from, was like he, he was working for an insurance company somewhere, yeah. just standing behind you. It was Omaha. Cool. It was an insurance commercial where he's doing the oh, Omaha yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. He well, owned some Papa John's for a little bit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got out of that pretty yeah. quickly once yeah, smartly. Uh, Papa Gatorade. was a racist. <laughs> Went a little rogue there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's enough. Papa yeah. John's pizza is good, though. It's pretty good. That's y'all's favorite? Yeah. 
Uh, uh, definitely not. Mm-mm. Really? I, I've become a, a pretty big fan of Donato's if we're talking Donato's about Donato's is chain. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Order it, go pick it up. It's like 10 minutes from the house. Yeah, it's so good. They're super quick, too. I'm a frozen pizza guy. Oh, Bobby, come I on I love now. a good frozen pizza. I've and got a guy I work with who does he Every every uh, Friday, he gets a frozen pizza. Dude, I'm telling Shout you, out, you get a good frozen pizza, man. It's different. It's kind of it's kind of takes you back to like high school, mm-hmm. like the square Mexican yeah. style. Like, oh wow, you know. Now here's what I've never understood though: are the places that sell you the frozen pizza and then you go home and cook it? Oh yeah, like uh, Jets or whatever. That no, place was Jets. For a while. Uh, like the um, what's we used that to place have called? It's, it was over there by Kroger on Scottsville Road. Oh, um, oh man, I can't remember it, but that's. The, Take and bake stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you, the the beauty of the frozen pizza is it's in your freezer. Big you don't yeah. have to do anything but take it out and put it in the oven. And it's five dollars. Yeah, I don't want to go pay like thirteen dollars yeah. for your frozen pizza and then I have to drive home and cook yeah. that thing. And what's it gonna be like in your car? Yeah, is it just does. Is it gonna melt yeah. just on the seats and I'm gonna have like pizza sweat on my passenger seat? Like, no, thank you. Do y'all worry about that? I worry about that. You go to the grocery store in town and like I live out farther than y'all do, and sometimes I'm like. Man, this sausage is a little it. warmer than <laughs> yeah. I'd like for it to be. This milk's sweating a lot. Papa Murphy's. Papa Murphy's. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, sure that's the reason why they went out of business. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no way that that is still. So aside from Donato's, though, like mainstay pizza stuff, like Domin- like where are you at? Pizza like the- Hut's been pretty good lately. Pizza We've been Hut, having yeah. that for some parties. It's been pretty solid. Thin crust. I heard uh, Little Caesars did a new uh, mm. za recently. It's uh, <laughs> They did like the old pepperoni. Apparently mm. it's pretty good. I have to try. It I don't. Out. I don't do pizza that much, so we will either do Donatos oh, or Blaze. Watch his health. Uh, yeah, uh, he's the health guy. Yeah, we do, guys, we do pizza a lot. Yeah, we do pizza, pizza. Yeah, multiple times <laughs> Gosh, a week. It's really good. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. We're glad you guys are here. The season is upon us, and we could not be more excited. We've got a great episode for you all tonight. We're going to be doing season predictions, and then our IDP flag plants for 2022. We're each bringing three guys to the table that we are planting our flag on and saying, by God, we believe that this outcome is going to happen for this player. I've toned back the spiciness a little bit. I still have some pretty hot takes in here, but these are ones that I really, truly believe will happen. Mm-hmm. Not Last year, I got a little sucked into nah. like the rookie linebacker Yours hype, are good. and I was like, Yours are good. Our second year linebacker hype, and I was like, I think this could happen, you know? Yours are really good. I don't believe in any of mine. Yeah. So just for the Adam content, started, hot yeah. takes, I'm going to put some uh, fire emojis on Twitter. And yeah. I don't believe in it, a bit of it. Not even. <laughs> not even a little bit. He's planting like one of those little electric mm-hmm. fence flags, Bobo. Speaking of flags, I went to Cabela's last week. Um, got a new truck, of course. Like, oh, did you? New to me, 85 Forerunner. Yes, sir. Shout out Joey you, the Tooth. He knows what I'm talking about. I don't think you've ever owned a, a new new truck. The seats were so disgusting, I had to go get some seat covers. Cabela's has a nice little 1999 special. They're really awesome. Anyways, I'm walking in, and I noticed there's a couple American flags, like, planted outside. Like, the little, you know, yeah, 12, the little yard 18 ones. inch little things. I see a guy, and I was like, man, there's a lot of flags that y'all put in the ground. He was like, yeah. And I said, how many do you have to put in? He was like, 2,500. Oh, my gosh. I said, how far are you? He said, I've put in 300. Oh, my oh gosh. And they were everywhere everywhere already. What Dude, was this what for? What was, what I holiday guess it was, was Labor this? Day weekend. They wanted to put out 2,500. People, we don't need flags. American flags for Labor Day. <laughs> Golly. The, Fourth of July, maybe. Poor fella. But chill out a little bit with the Labor Day stuff. It's just a good excuse to be off work. That's <laughs> all those really flags, it. All those flags going to a landfill somewhere. That's right. It's like, yeah, hey, hey, Jeff, I know you just put those in like four hours ago. Labor yeah. Day's over. Please take them out. Get them up. We don't out. need them. Weird. Get the scarecrows out for Halloween. Let's just Jeff. give people those nuts they come in for, you know, a couple of uh, glasses, maybe a couple lighters, maybe a couple seat covers. Apparently, hey, love you, Cabela's. Let's ride. Looking for a sponsor. So flag plants tonight, gentlemen. But before we do that, we've got some season predictions, and before we do that, we're gonna hit some news and notes. Crazy news weekend last week. Hey, let's um, before we start. Huh? Yeah, I was going to say, hopefully y'all are like the new Soad Shack decorations. If you're watching on YouTube, you can uh, check uh. it out. We're in the process of updating the Soad Shack uh, for 2022 and getting this baby ready for prime time. Because so, we rich now. That's right. We got big time. We got draft kit money. So <laughs> we we millionaires now, folks. That's right. Uh, but thank you to everyone who bought the IDP draft kit. Yep. Uh, appreciate y'all checking that out. Really proud of that. 
and uh, hopefully it's going to help you win some leagues. Let us know if you are a draft kit, you know, purchaser. If you want a title, come back and let us know. I think that would be fun to uh, see mm-hmm. some folks that maybe we had a small hand in helping them win their leagues. Going to be a lot of emails. I hope so. We'll share them if you if that happens. We'll share the tweet or the email on mm-hmm. social media be, and hype be, all kinds of likes. Guarantee that mm-hmm. get some unreal engagement. Sure, we'll send it through some retweet groups. That's right. <laughs> We're in <laughs> lots like, of those. Look, ten or, ten or uh, eleven, you know, guaranteed likes. <laughs> guaranteed, <laughs> high quality likes as well. Absolutely, some of the best in the community. The absolute best. <laughs> So it's just good to be back. It's good to have y'all here. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we are going to do, yeah, some news and notes. Gentlemen, really the only lingering piece of news outside of is Shaquille Leonard going to play week one? My guess, no. That's so weird to me. I'm not used to that yet. Mm -hmm. Shaquille Leonard. I know, right? I'm thinking, okay, Josh, make sure you say the right name. It's like Bobby Mm O'Karake. I just can't. Uh, It's tough. Yeah, it's a a tough, tough look for old Shaq. But I don't think Shaq's going to play Week one. You can't go Shaq because then I feel like I'm talking about the NBA. It's hey, just once you go Shaq, you never go back. That's right. That, that is what they say, Bobby. Um, <laughs> but I don't think he's going to play. Bobo, the Blake Martinez news uh-huh. was sort of like lurking out there. He wasn't really, I think if you were really plugged in on the beat reporters, yeah, he wasn't really a great fit for this defense. Wasn't getting a lot of run in the preseason, but a surprise release by the New York Giants. Where do we think uh, B-Mart ends up? Who cares? I mean, Detroit, probably, maybe Denver. I don't know. 30-year-old coming off an ACL. His PFF numbers have been pretty bad the last couple of years. I don't want to get into it too much because it will lead into one of my flag plants, but I don't really care where B-Mark goes. I mean, I know there's a lot of people who have a ton of shares of him, so they will want to know, but yeah, yeah. I have Blake Martinez nowhere. Listen, yeah, if you listen to the IDP show, we ain't fans. Yeah. We ain't been fans. Yeah. We, I mean, we talked about, you know, the only reason this probably hadn't happened sooner is because his contract was so large. I almost tweeted this week, Jalen Smith is Zach Cunningham is Blake Martinez. I mean, that, that's exactly what it is. I mean, you got to pay, pay attention to PFF enough to know who's good, who's bad, and who's really bad. Because yeah. it is who's a fi- in danger of losing their job. IDP is a fine line, especially when you get into cornerbacks and you get into people who are being targeted and, you know, it's cool to get targeted as a cornerback, but it's also bad to lose your job. It's bad to, you know, have a bad PFF score when you're a linebacker in coverage because, you know, teams are only going to keep you and put up with that stuff for uh, for so long. So, yeah. in no world is this good. I, some people yeah. may try and paint this as like, oh, this is a good thing. You're going to no. be going somewhere. You're going to be going. No, dude, Negative. this is never not good, good when a team does not want you. Yep. It's a. It's kind of a dark cloud on sort of your reputation as a player. Yeah. And he hasn't been scooped up yet. I yep. know teams are kind of like. He'll, he'll find a job because yeah. there will be a rash of injuries. He'll be on a roster week two yeah. and probably in our lineups by like week five or six. Uh, I think Vegas makes a lot of sense. His former defensive coordinator, Patrick Graham, is there now. Sure. But boy, that really sucks for all the yeah. other linebackers All there. the linebackers there, your Perrymans, your Jayons, your... Uh, is he even healthy? Double D, Divine Diablo. He looked slow and tentative from what I was reading mm-hmm. about the preseason reports. But how much of that was him just not being a good fit for this I mean, defense? I mean, I think, you know, trusting that ACL, I mean, that's yeah. that's a definite yep. thing, you know. Um, I would think it would take him a little while to really trust that knee. So, yeah, I mean, I, he's not going to be better off the ACL. He's yeah. almost 30. Yeah. But yep. this is a guy that was like – LB 30 something in our dynasty ranks. Like he's not been on our radar for a bit. So almost more importantly is it does suck that Darian Beavers got hurt, but, um, wow. Are we back to take Crowder season or I'm jumping in on the Micah McFadden hype train. I know it's early. I know he's a rookie. I know he doesn't have a ton of draft capital, but take Crowder sucks and they're going to have to have some people play. And Micah McFadden has kind of popped a little bit in the preseason. Um, he looks exactly like Blake Martinez as well, which uh, which doesn't that's weird. Hurt. Yeah, I haven't scoped out yeah, Micah he, McFadden yet. His, He's uh, a dead ringer. His uh, size and his demeanor seems to be very similar to Martinez. Oh, he doesn't like look like him physically uh, in the face. Some, somewhat. Okay. Yeah. Twenty nine point one overall PFF grade for Tay Crowder in twenty twenty one. Thirty four point eight coverage grade. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Not good. Man, yeah. Is that, that be, the is that the worst PFF grade it's, it's, for someone who plays significant snaps? It's got to be in contention for sure. So is Joe Schobert unsigned right now? He is unsigned. He is. Wow. Correct. That'd He's butt too, though. I mean, he you know preseason he looked like ass. Yeah. They got they got rid of him. I love that you quickness. went from butt to ass. I was like, thank you for going butt, and then you immediately went ass. So you <laughs> blew yes, that. Sir. Right oh. Didn't like it. Didn't like it. Didn't feel right. If it's too much for y'all, this take the show for you. <laughs> I wanted to pull up. I wanted to pull up Macri's Don't tweet. Don't beep it. I'm Don't not, beep it. I can't beep it. I'm not going to go back and find it and beep it. Um, so he said, I have a tough time getting too excited about Tay Crowder this season. Martinez was just outside my top 12 LBs because the New York Giants are not a super LB friendly defense. Mm-hmm. Crowder was one of the most inefficient LBs last season, which can carry over to 2022. Uh, he had a negative 25.8 on the tackles versus expected. Wow. So we underperformed by about 26 tackles. He was that inefficient as a tackler. One of the most brilliant metrics I have seen in a while. Truly. It really helps me understand like tackle efficiency yeah. is, is helpful, I think. But when you can actually see the expected versus the production, mm-hmm. you can see that gap. You're like, oh, okay. That really connects. Especially for your middle linebackers. It will gradually bring down your outside linebackers just because of the pass rush. Um, But for those guys that are supposed to be good, heavy Blake Martinez type tacklers for them to see that type of number is pretty, uh, pretty concerning. But again, it just goes to show you how important PFF is. You know, people want to say that PFF numbers don't matter. They're not super important. They don't really, you know, they don't really kind of give you an accurate information on IDP stats. You've got to pay attention to it. If you're going to be an IDP player, if you're going to be a dynasty IDP dynasty. player, dynasty you especially, really yeah. need to understand. Um, I don't want to miss this as well, Josh. Uh, Harold Landry news. That's right. Oh, yeah, man. that's just... That sucks. Such a tough blow. I remember I really had my eyes open to how amazing Harold Landry was for IDP mm-hmm. these last few seasons, and especially in 2021. Mm-hmm. So, like I said on Twitter, the only silver lining is he got that big fat deal this yeah. offseason. Mm-hmm. So that helps soften the blow a little bit, but still just a devastating blow for that Titans defense yeah. because the guys behind him are not good. No. I mean, Danico Autry, Bud Dupree, the only like blue chip guy on this defense, there's probably two, like Simmons and Byard, probably. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's really it. I think Malik Willis could be starting like multiple games for this team down the stretch. Yep. Yeah. Be nice. I think he looked pretty good in the preseason. I think Byard said something this uh, last week that he's given um, him really weird, like shades of um, Steve McNair. Oh, okay. Kind of giving him early Steve McNair vibes, which I like. I mean, I don't like the Titans. But it's kind of fun to watch just because they're in Nashville. I know? want. I, I was thinking the other day, this is definitely a hot take, what if this 2022 QB class that everyone was so collectively down on, mm-hmm. what if they have a better performance collectively than yeah. the 2021 QBs did? Mm-hmm. Which is not a high bar. No. I mean, Mac Jones was your best QB from that class last year, and then Davis Mills was number two statistically. Mm. So, like, what if we get, you know, maybe – eight to 12 games from Ritter. What if we get four to six games from Malik Willis and half a season from Kenny Pickett? Mm -hmm. I think those guys could actually do some things and and have a nice showing and, you know, hold on to those jobs moving forward. Six to eight games from Bailey Zappi. Oh, that'd be fun. You know, let's ride. He's a guy there. Mm -hmm. Tops country. Let's ride. QB controversy. That's right. (laughs) No, I don't think that's happening, but boy, that would be fun if he did manage to get into a game. So we're missing something else too. Uh, Cam Curl in a sling. It actually came off. Mm. I don't know if you saw that today. Like, I'm sure he can take it off at times. I think he was off. Like actually it's a thumb. I think he had thumb surgery. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it was, I thought it was a shoulder. That was what was worrying me. Well, Rivera was being weird. Yeah. Thumb surgery. Yeah. Well, that's still not great. You not great. Any, no, we want no surgeries. Just put it in preferably. a club. Put it yeah. in a club, Cam. Like yeah. let's 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 move forward here. So maybe the INTs will be down a little bit this year for Cameron Curl. Yeah, maybe club Cam. I like it. There you go. That's pretty tight. Club Cam. Good I'm all about Josh. it. So and it's weird that we're uh, starting an NFL season and Cam Newton's not on a roster. Speaking I was thinking of that Cam's, the other day. Yeah, it's I just kind of strange. Uh, top 100 highlights from last year, and it was the I'm back. That was such yeah. a cool moment, and now gone. he's not even on a roster. He's gone kind of weird it's good it's a good time but let's uh <laughs> wrap up the news and notes segment here with a couple of fun announcements gentlemen we have mentioned before on social media you might have seen it 
that we are moving all of our paid support over to the idpshow.com. We turned off the anchor listener support. So thank you Mm -hmm. to everyone who supported us over there. Over the years, we could not have done this show without that support. So thank you. If you'd like to support the show moving forward, it is the idpshow.com. It's five bucks a month or 50 bucks for the entire year. And you're going to get for the first time, besides our undying uh, appreciation and affection, Mm -hmm. you're going to get some nice perks as part of this support. You're going to get a waiver wire article sent out Monday night from our boy boo bam. We did that every week last year and it was fantastic. We've got uh, the newly christened banged up podcast with Lee Andrews It's Mm. the injury podcast that we're going to be sending out on Fridays. As far as I know, this is the only injury report podcast that touches on IDPs. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this show, you probably play in an IDP league and that would be super helpful to know what to expect from those guys on Friday's injury reports, year round access to Addy's dynasty ranks. We know y'all love those. So if you want year round access, that is where you want to be, the idpshow.com. And every week, this is a cool feature. We're going to be sending out a thread from the site where you'll be able to ask us any IDP-related question you got, and we will answer it live on our preview shows. So, folks, Gosh, we're trying geez. to hook you all Woo. up and help you out, and thank you for the support. So, theidpshow.com, if you want to support us, we're going to send you some awesome perks this year. And keep in mind, like you don't have to stay subscribed. If you want to just pop in for a month, get the ranks, That's right. see what we're doing, Bounce. pop back out. That's right. We love that. That's, That's totally cool. Totally like, fine. No one's going to be upset if you unsubscribe, subscribe again later. Who cares? Yeah. Just it's all good. Come check us out for a little bit. Any, if you want. any mm-hmm. love that you want to send our way will be appreciated. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And we will be sending out all of these perks to all of our subscribers at the IDP show.com for week one. So if you want to see what it is, you're going to be getting as a paid supporter over there. Make sure you're subscribed for free. The IDP show.com. We're going to be sending out all the goodies mm. to everyone week one. So that's the first bit of news. And gentlemen, This next piece of news, I am incredibly excited to finally get to share with y'all. It has been months in the making. If you've listened to this show for any amount of time, you know that one of our fantasy football heroes is the great Sigmund Bloom from Football Guys. And I am thrilled to announce that this month, once a month in season, we will be doing special collaborative episodes of the IDP Blitz With SIG, it'll be dropping in our feed and in the Audible feed. It will be audio podcast, video. We're going to be talking with SIG about some macro topics in IDP. It's going to be a lot of fun, boys. I am fired up to get to do this with football guys and get to do it with your hero, Addy, Sigmund Bloom. Yeah, I mean, I hate when people say say this, but I mean, it it is surreal. I mean, it's it's insane. Um, if you would have told me that we would be collabing with that dude, you mm-hmm. know, when we started doing this, what, like three, four years ago at this point? Yep. Uh, I would have, I would have thought there's no way, man. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it really is like a dream come true. Um, it's going to be fire. I mean, Sig is the absolute best. Love the way he thinks. And, um, yeah, it's just going to be a fun show, man. I'm, I'm super pumped about it. Yeah, Bobo, there's something beautiful about the way Sig goes about doing podcasts. He truly is like an artist. Mm-hmm. And that's what I appreciate most about him is he understands the artistry of what it is to do a podcast and to get to collab with him, to do these episodes together that are going to appear in both the Audible feed and our feed. It it's truly just a, a dream come true type of opportunity. You know, we've had some big names on the podcast. Nate Tice, Greg Rosenthal, Mark Sessler, you know, some some people with some, some heavy followers. hitters, some clout. But I'll be honest with you, Sig is the one who comes on pretty regularly. He's been on a couple of times now that I'm like, man, I could talk to that guy a whole lot longer. Hey, we're going to have the opportunity to. That's Can't right. Wait. Sigmund's one of those guys where he's so smart that I don't, and, and, and the things he says, I'm just like, yeah. How do I follow this? That's up? like, how do I hit the ball back on that? Yeah, right? It's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the the yeehaw guy over here trying to, you know, mm-hmm. bat the ball back. It's just <laughs> tough. It's tough. But, but we're gonna get better. We're gonna we're, get some more reps. Iron sharpens <laughs> iron, as we know. <laughs> so look forward to those. Like I said, it's gonna be at the end of every month of the season. So after week four, after week eight, after week twelve, and then mm-hmm. we're gonna do after week fifteen or sixteen. I think it is. 
Uh, so once a month, if you're not subscribed to the Audible podcast feed, go check that out. Those guys are freaking awesome. Cecil and Sig and Matt Waldman are going to be firing it up every week in season. Uh, the, uh, the IDP Blitz is their existing IDP podcast over there. It has Matt Schaff and John Norton on in season. They're like quick episodes, 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So this will be a little bit different flavor of the IDP Blitz, but that'll be once a month in season. Really cool opportunity and uh, just awesome to partner with football guys. That, that site and those guys are doing awesome work. Uh, some really good IDP contributors over there. You look across the board at the dudes they have ranking and it's like, wow. Like they have assembled quite yeah. a squad over there. Yeah, man. And they've always been. I mean, that was the first paid site that I ever that I ever found. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big reason why I got an IDP. Um, they're just... They're one of the best, man. It, it, it really is an honor to work with those guys. Yeah, looking forward to it. So check it out. Subscribe to the Audible and make sure to check out those episodes. The first one will be coming the first week of October. So look forward to that. Gentlemen, speaking of the season, let's do some predictions. This is always fun. I think my one thing that I got, got right last season was I said the Rams were a Super Bowl team. So mm, my good, only claim good. to fame mm. uh, is that I was pretty high on the Rams. Who'd you have? You had the Rams, Bills? Did you have the Bills? I feel like you were high on the Bills last year. I think year. it was the Bills, yeah. It's pretty good pretty good picks. Yeah. So uh, I don't – was anyone in on – I think John, when the – Playoffs actually started. Him and Johnny were doing like mm -hmm. season one and a half of Big Nickel, and he said, Rams, Bengals, why not? Yeah. Because I like Aaron Donald, and I think I like Joe Burrow or something like that. So, But no one was calling Rams, Bengals at the oh, beginning of the season. Oh, Macri, of if course. You, if you get one of those teams right, you've done really, really well. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do some season predictions, Bobo. Damn, I thought we were going to get through without saying his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, we ain't. No, we ain't. And that... I, <laughs> That's a great segue, Addy. I should mention, uh, you probably have seen this on Twitter. We announced it, uh, I think, earlier this week. We will be having preview teams in season. So Addy and Johnny the Greek are up first on Friday. They will be one of our preview teams. I'll be working with John Macri. Bobo will be with the young king, Evan Ronda. And then we will have the football guys team, Kyle, Joey, and Tripp as well. So, Looking forward to that. Those episodes will drop Thursday or Friday. But, uh, Bobo, why don't you kick us off with your season previews? We're doing division winners, wild cards, and then your championship games and your Super Bowl picks. So get us started. Let's do the division winners and the wild card first, and then we'll okay. do the championship round. That last. sounds good. So my AFC division winners, I have the Bungles, the Jaguars. That just feels like you're trying to troll me. The Bills and the Chiefs. The AFC wild card, I have the Chargers, the Broncos, and the Titans. And then the NFC division winners, I have the Packers, the Rams, the Buccaneers, the Cowboys, and then the NFC wild card is going to be the 49ers, the old Vikings are going to come out, and then the Jalen Hurts-led Eagles as well. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of overlap in these. So AFC division winners, I've got a few different teams from you. I went Ravens, Colts, Bills, Chargers. And then AFC Wild Card, Chiefs, Dolphins, Raiders. I've just got a spidey sense on the Raiders. I think they could be a lot better than what we're anticipating. I mean, this was a wild card team with Hunter Renfro as their mm -hmm. best wide receiver. And you like the Dolphins, too. I do like the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, you added Teron Armstead. You added Tyreek Hill. Like, there's them and the Eagles, the Dolphins to a lesser extent. I think the Eagles are a better roster top to bottom. But both those teams hinge on unproven quarterbacks mm -hmm. that the floor and the ceiling feels very far apart. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see both of those teams bottoming out if those quarterbacks are not good. Don't disagree. So, NFC division winners, I'm going Packers, Rams, Bucks, and Eagles. And then for my wild card picks, I'm going with your Vikes, Addy, Saints. I have a sneaking suspicion about the Saints as mm. well. And the 49ers, I think. Trey Lance is going to have that team in contention for like 10 to 11 wins. Hmm. So, Addy, why don't you hit us with your AFC and NFC division winners and wild cards? Okay, I like the Chargers. I like the Indianapolis Coats. The Coats. I like the Cincinnati Bengals, and I like the Buffalo Bills. Uh, for the AFC wild card, I like the Chiefs, I like the Ravens, and I like the Broncos. AFC just AFC's absolutely gross, insane. bro. It's mm -hmm. so loaded. Uh, for the NFC division winners, I like the Vikings this year a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with them there. Nice. Rams, 
Eagles, Bucks, wild card. I like Packers, Niners, Cowboys. Yeah, I think we all picked the 49ers to make it as a wild card. Mm -hmm. I think we all picked the Bucks. Yeah, we all picked the Vikes as either a division winner or a wild card. We all picked the Bucks to win the NFC South. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we all picked the Bills to win the NFC East. And then we were kind of scattered across the board. We all had the Chiefs either as winners or wild card. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's a few teams I feel really good about. Uh, but not a lot of surprises, man. I mean, not really. You don't have any Broncos. That AFC West is just so tough. I and you. I just think it's sort of like. Uh, I don't know that the alchemy is going to be there with Russell Wilson, Nathaniel so Hackett. Like, I think that could take a while to kind of like fully like meld. Like, I think 2023 will be more of their year. Hmm. And I think losing Tim Patrick was a significant loss. Yeah, they still need some talent, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, because Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, I mean, both those guys, we think they're going to be pretty good, but there's still a lot of unknown there. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, I could see that. I mean, Raiders made it last year, and they added Devontae Adams. Exactly. Coaching upgrade. Devontae Adams. Yeah, Chandler Jones. Like, that was my thing. I was like, we we look at this, and we're like, yeah, but X, Y, Z. But it's like, these teams were decent last year, Mm -hmm. and then they got major improvements across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so... What if uh, old, what did I call him last time? Mike McDonald uh, down <laughs> yeah. there in Miami. Mark. Yeah, Mark McDonald. What about uh, the, Ronald McDonald. What about the, um, oh gosh, I just lost it. I was looking at the division. Oh, the Buccaneers division is just nasty. It's, it's NFC South. Total butt. I yeah. mean, the Panthers can't do it. I don't really believe in the Saints that much. Um, I think the Saints will win like nine games. The NFC is not that good. Yeah, and you Sean Payton being the board. Gone, probably not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, that's a bad division, man. I the think Falcons. the Panthers probably win like six games. The Falcons probably win three or four. Ah, oh, Jags. Yeah, speak I'm, on it. I'm a believer, man. I love what they're doing. I mean, I really think Trevor Lawrence is the one that we're going to see take the biggest step this year. I agree with that, and I don't think it has so much to do with the players as much as I really like Doug Peterson. Um, I really think that. Philly messed up. I think Philly should have kept Doug Peterson as a head coach. Like, they had a couple of tough years, but I don't think he was worth getting rid of at that point. I mean, you look at what they've done. Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen, you know, now they're going to have three pretty competitive linebackers there behind that defensive line. Andre Sisco, another safety in the league that's kind of a sleeper that I like. Um, I don't know. They've got a ton of weapons on offense. They might not be the elite Tyreek Hill type wide receivers, but they have a lot of these Marvin Jones, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, I think is probably going to be slept on this year. Yeah, for sure. I even think Evan Ingram could have a decent yep. year. I agree. Um, James Robinson's going to be back for week one. You've got Travis Etienne coming in. They just have a lot of options. And I think Doug Peterson is super um, creative in how he can use these guys. I think he is. He's almost like Andy Reid-esque a little bit, in my opinion. I really think he's a great head coach. I, I, I just like the Jaguars. And I think about the AFC South, I think the Titans can suck. And no offense to you all, but I don't think Matt Ryan is what he I used to be. I think that team will be like a nine, nine-win nine team, probably like nine Maybe and eight. The, the Colts. Colts. Yeah. yeah. I, I, just, think the, I just don't think there's going to be as big of a bump going from Carson Wentz to Matt Ryan. Boy, based on what I'm hearing – players seem to think there is. Yeah, really? Michael Pittman's quote today about like, you know, <laughs> we were just kind of playing ball last year. This year we actually, Matt wants us to be like in our spots, He's at our depth. talking depths. to us. Yeah. How many games did y'all win with uh, uh, Old Man Rivers? I think we went um, 11 and 5. Oh, wow. 10 and 6. I think it was y'all 11 and 5. Um, I mean, you got JT there. I think we did. I guess that's true. I guess that's true. But at least I, I think I see the Jags as a playoff team. Maybe they're a wild card team and maybe the Colts get in. I just... I don't think the Titans think, are that good this year. I think, no, I yeah, know. I don't think so either. Especially the Texans, the Landry, yeah, you know? yeah, are probably a three or four win operation. The Jags strike me a lot like the Broncos. There may be a, a tier down from the Broncos, but I think it's next year. That's a good call on when Malik the Willis. Alchemy all comes together for those teams. Yeah, you're right about Malik Willis. He could play six games. If this you're year. wondering what teams could bottom out and miss the playoffs, the Titans just strike me as a prime candidate. Some old defensive ends. Autry and Bud Dupree. Yeah. Um, I know they have a younger guy, Weaver. Um, Weavers. I think he's hurt right now, though. But anyways. Yeah. So let's talk about our championship games. 
Baba, who did you have going to the NFC and AFC championship, and who was your Super Bowl pick? That AFC game, I just want to see over and over again. Man. If we saw this for the next 10 years, I'm I'd good. be fine with it. Chiefs, Bills, yes, AFC. Sir. Just Give it to me. I don't care. I just want to watch that. And then, honestly, this is probably too far for my Rams, but I'm going to say Packers-Rams for the NFC championship game as well. Let's just hope Stafford stays healthy. And we get to see a little bit of an old man Stafford Rogers throw down. That'd be fun. That'd be a fun little round of championship games. Young guns and then old fellas. So I went a little bit different route for the AFC and NFC championship game. I went Ravens Chargers. And this is where my thoughts on how this season is going to shake out will really start to emerge. I think Lamar Jackson is about to set the league on fire. Mm -hmm. I think he's about to repeat his MVP performance I think that was 2019 that he went scorched earth. I think we're going to be looking at like an 11 or 12 win Ravens team. Mm -hmm. I think the Chargers are going to take that next step finally. Like we've been waiting for this, and I think this is the year it all comes together for them. So Ravens, Chargers, AFC, and then the Eagles. I really love this Eagles roster. I am not going to bet against Jalen Hurts. I think this is a complete team. I think they're going to be there at the end. I've got them going against the 49ers who I think were one step away. If they had just been able to unlock a little bit more with that team, I think that they're probably advancing further because they were in the NFC Championship game Mm -hmm. against the Rams. Am I remembering that Mm -hmm. correctly? I think if you had had a Jimmy G who could do like 25% more, they probably are in the Super Bowl. So I think Trey Lance is going to be that guy. And hell, even if he's not, you've got Jimmy G in the building yeah. still. So give me Eagles 49ers in the NFC. Doesn't it feel like a nice quiet week where Lamar could get an extension? That would, that would, yeah. uh, I'm waiting for that to happen. Yeah. What are they doing? Yeah. Baltimore. Why are we dragging? Who are y'all paying? Yeah. What, what, how do you think you're going to upgrade from this? Yeah. You let Judon go. You have no linebackers of note. Okay, congratulations. You've got overpaid Chuck Clark. You know, young J.K. Dobbins. You've got Gus Edwards on a minimum deal. Yeah, they don't have a ton of elite Bateman's a rookie. There. Yeah. You're probably paying Mark Andrews a little bit. Definitely. Maybe some linemen. Just, I think the hang-up is probably Lamar wants a fully guaranteed deal like Deshaun Watson. He, he runs is, a lot. He's going to get hurt. He's representing himself. He is his own agent. So that's probably, you know, I think impacting things as well. But... Get it done, Baltimore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, stop messing around. Get yeah. this thing done. Because he said, once the season starts, it's over. Yeah. Now, whether or not that's true, we'll see. But, uh, boy, I hope they get him signed. Boy, you don't want to let someone like that hit the open market. No. I, mean, I guess they could franchise tag him, of course. He could go the Kirk Cousins route and basically control his own destiny. Woo, and make a ton. And make a billion dollars or whatever on the open market. But That may not be a bad idea for Baltimore that's to why do. I think he's like, look, we'll just... Either way, I'm going to get paid a fully guaranteed yeah. contract Damn, or I'm going to franchise tag, which is fully guaranteed. Yeah. I'm going to do that for two years. I'm going to hit the open market and make like $700 million at that point. Could yeah. you go that route and get a high first-round draft pick in the next like couple of years? Because you've got some pretty el- elite quarterbacks coming out of college. Um, could you make a uh, – you would want to make a deal. You want to just lock up Lamar. Just sign him, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Stop messing around. You know, I even go back to thinking like, man, Seattle's got to think like, gosh, I wish we still had Russell Wilson. You know, like they've got all these picks and whatever. Just let let Pete Carroll go. Go get a new head coach and keep Russ. I will tell you, I think there's a lot of people who look at this Seattle team a lot like, weirdly enough, the Broncos, where they're collecting assets for that next quarterback to kind of drop in there. And that's the thing, too. From what my early understanding is, there are about five to six first-round quarterbacks in next next year's class. Yeah. So you don't have to be necessarily a top, you know, five team to have a shot at one of these guys. They've got good pieces in place there in, in Seattle. I mean, Lockett, I've, Metcalf, you got Kenneth Walker, who people yeah. are letting him slide now because mm-hmm. of the, the injury that he's had to this core. I mean, he's going to be a beast probably next yes. year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that'll be a nice and they'll 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 have plenty of money to go get exactly. someone else. You know, they'll have I think mm-hmm. they said I think they said 50 something million. I mean, Noah Fant's still really young yep. and has a lot of potential. But do you all trust Pete Carroll? Yes, you do. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, that dude has had that team in contention ever since he took over the program. If Seattle doesn't have Russell Wilson, though, what's now, Pete Carroll's now, record? Yeah, he has to get a quarterback. Yeah, That's the important yeah. point here is you've got to nail the quarterback next season. But they've been pretty underwhelming mm-hmm. with Russ for a Last while Last couple now. of years. Yes. You know? yep. And so. I mean, 
Russ is a weirdo. I'd want that dude out of the building, too. Yeah, I agree. Get out of here. Let's get someone that understands how to talk to people and is socially Let's aware. get someone who can say words besides go Hawks. Did y'all <laughs> watch the uh, Serena Williams uh, match the other night? I did not. Basically, her last match ever. The most yeah. watched tennis match in the history oh. of ESPN. Me and my I little saw. girl sat down and watched it, and she loved it, dude. It was awesome. But um, Russ and Sierra were there. And uh, oh, I saw gosh, a meme. I'm sure they were. I saw a meme that was just basically them and Aviator sitting there saying, him saying, like, I want to say, let's ride so freaking bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I guess he now has that in his repertoire. Now that's that he doesn't taken, have Go Hawks. Over football, man. Yeah, I mean, it really Everyone has. knows that. Everyone's everyone doing Everyone knows that meme. Sure, there's t shirts you could buy. Like Mitch Trubisky was doing it in his little thing I saw. Oh, God, Mitch. Yeah. So. Can we just get Mitch out of there, please? It's gonna be it's a weird year for the NFL. Like I can't wait, but there's some weird stories. That's the thing is like the I mean, I know probably the these picks all look pretty chalk, but I feel like the good teams got better and mm-hmm. then like there wasn't a lot of teams that got really worse, but some teams are just still meh, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was an interesting thing. The athletic was doing like their picks for the playoffs in one of their columns, and they had like locks, like teams that they believe are a lock to make the playoffs, like hundred percent, like the bills were on that list. And then they had teams. Yeah. They had teams that were a lock to not make the playoffs, like hundred percent, like Jags, uh, Texans, uh, Falcons, Jets. Yeah. All these kind of just cellar dwellers. And then they had the Steelers as a hundred percent lock to not make the playoffs. And I think, boy, that is Mike Tomlin love to see that. That's risky because he ain't never missed, he's, right? He's never had a losing season, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, Mitch probably isn't a in the downgrade. He from ben. is an upgrade on Big I Ben, think so just because Big Ben was so bad last and year, he'll be able. He'll be fine. Like he has receivers that are damn good. Deontay Johnson's literally always open. Pickens seems like a maniac, and Claypool's gonna be a huge person in the slot. I mean, for, to fill that juju role. I mean, that's a perfect candidate. That's fine. I think Fryer we'll get Pickett moves, at some Najee. point during the season, which I think will be an upgrade. I'm excited Benny to see Snell. Kenny Beckett. Kenny Beckett in that oh, offense. Kenny Beckett. Kenny Beckett. <laughs> Remember those Kenny days? in there. Dre Greenlaw. Look up on your Beckett and see what your uh, all his cards only worth 84 cents. Oh, Kenny Beckett. Y'all Beckett guys, you don't know what I'm talking about? Yes, oh, yeah, the Beckett books. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was a subscriber. It's like the Kelly Blue Book for uh, yeah, trading cards. Yeah. All right, Addy, who's your uh, championship game picks here? All right, I got the Bucks versus the Packers. That's yum. And then I got the Chargers versus the Bills. Mm. Super Bowl, we got Bucks versus Bills. Okay, Bucks versus Bills. That One is... last ride for Tommy. Tommy, he might be getting divorced from Giselle. All the tabloids are hot with that. Uh, yeah, on? there's a little bit yeah. of a spat going on, apparently. Worth nice. it. Can't, nice. can't so blame Giselle. Could see a glow up. Yeah, just like, uh, hey, Tom, Already looking hotter. so oh, good yeah. to have you home. Wait, where are you going? Oh, you're going back to football. Okay, that oh, sounds cool. great. This yeah, is I wonder super if that cool. was like the big reason. I mean, we how have we still not heard why he was out of training camp for like 10 to 11 days? Is yeah, it? he was probably trying to. Re- probably at some like rich. retreat out in like Bali, like mm-hmm. with his wife, trying to go through like couples therapy. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that, that story is going to break at some point and it's going to be fascinating. So Bucks Bills, who's your pick? Who's the Super Bowl champion? Let's go with the Bucks. Mm, the Bucks again, huh? Wow, one, one last, last ride. One last ride. This is it for Tom Brady. I think with the Fox deal that he signed, 10-year deal, whatever it was, I think he, all the signs are there <laughs> that uh, Tom Brady's done after this year. Can every NFL quarterback have something, like some type of a cliche little saying this year, but it has to involve the word ride. <laughs> one last ride. That's true. Let's one last ride. let's ride. <laughs> That's, I hope, hopeful we don't get that like one last dance doc with Tom Brady. Well, it's, it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's a fine line because I mean, I, this thing's going to get worn out, but it's like the, 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 uh, the players that have the dog in them, mm-hmm. the internet's run that. Please yeah. Know, twi- like, people will not stop. Doing we got that. about two weeks of dogs. that and then it was over. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of, you know, people that are not funny out there. So. A lot of lame 40 year old wash dads yeah. ruin jokes pretty quickly. <laughs> we got a little roadie for that. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not on the uh, drop board. Oh, Sorry, Bobo. <laughs> I already got the ad read uh, music killer. pulled up. So, what a um, killer. all right. So Addy's going to trail. <laughs> yeah. Be trail. Don't <laughs> I told you it's not on that board. <laughs> uh, so Addy's going bucks bills with the bucks getting one more ring for Tom Brady. Bobo, who's your Super Bowl pick? Super Bowl pick is Chiefs Packers. My homie wins. My homie wins. There you go. Uh, that was the first ever Super Bowl. So you're you're throwing it all the way back to the beginning there, Bobo. Yeah. Love that. I feel like Rodgers is going to have 
a year where he's good with all these weird receivers. And I feel like Mahomes is going to have a very similar year. I almost think that Mahomes could maybe be better. You picked the two guys who lost their wide receiver ones. I don't care. I loved. I love Mahomes. I love Rodgers. We bet. We bet against Rodgers every year, and he makes us look stupid. Um, I really like Mahomes. What they've done there. I think you don't have the one Tyreek Hill to hone in on anymore. I think you've now got five to six wide receivers slash tight ends, Justin Watsons, Jody Fortsons that could come in, and uh, I think it's almost a more dangerous offense for these defenses to try to keep up with. Could be completely wrong. They still got to figure out their running game. Um, do love Isaiah Pacheco, though. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah. Gave up a King's ransom for him. Sure, sure did. did, Bobby. We'll get about it. We'll get to it. No, we, we don't have who you get. We who'd need you to get, get who'd you get tonight. It's going to do it go? We got it filled out. <laughs> the folks want y'all want to hear who'd you get? But there's no one That's out it. there. There's no one out listen, there to listen, like respond listen. to you. Anyone saying anything in the chat? Uh, there's not a chat, Addy. We're not right. live literally anywhere. Uh, Sorry, guys. Can't do it. All right. So Chiefs Packers with the Chiefs winning. Addy went Bucks Bills with the Bucks winning. I'm going battle the birds. Ravens Eagles with Woo. the Ravens winning. So. No, but that I'm all wow. in on the Ravens this year, man. The I Ravens I'm fine with. The other side of that, Eagles little, is uh, uh, I do like the Eagles. The though, Eagles, man. that Eagles team is Chauncey Gardner was kind of just oh, a nice baby. cherry on top of the Sunday. <sighs> Ooh, but and think Trey about Sermon, yummy. Getting getting uh, who was the terrible wide receiver they drafted that they shipped Jalen Rager, Jaylen Rager, Rager Rager. shipped him out the door. You got AJ Brown, Devonte Smith. He's a, he's a Viking uh, now, he's Josh. Back. He's going to bounce back. He's going to bounce back. <laughs> How is that? Somebody was saying this week that uh, it's so funny that the uh, wide receiver that they took over Justin yeah. Jefferson, now the Vikings also have. Sometimes you just got to get rid of those guys because they're just a bad reminder. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's like, like, oh, nope. Don't like looking at that yeah. guy on the roster anymore. Would you trust Nick Sirianni? I don't know, man. <sighs> that team, I will say they. It looks like you, Bobby. No, he stop does. it. Sexy Southern I didn't Nick like, Sirianni, I didn't like to it Greg then. Rosenthal. Didn't like it then, don't like it now. Uh, I will say they pulled off a pretty brilliant pivot. This team was throwing the ball like crazy. They were like two and four. And then, um, you know, they do this midseason pivot and become a running team and make the playoffs. Now, they get their doors blown off by the Bucks in the playoffs. So they were kind of a fraudulent team to begin with. But, um, yeah, I think that uh, – I think this Eagles team with Sirianni is uh, – can you make more noise, Adam, please, uh, with, with the beer? That would be great. Thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah, I think, do I trust Sirianni? I mean, I don't know. I think this is a big year for him. Yeah. I think we're going to learn a lot about uh, his credentials as a head coach and whether he's got the stuff to make it long-term in the league based on how he handles this, like, loaded roster he has. But him wearing the Kenny Gainwell shirt to that press conference the other day was like, bro, what are you doing? He tries a little too hard. He does try too hard. He tries a little too hard to be cool. I like him ice cold, and I won't apologize for that. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, we got to get out of here and uh, take a quick ad break, and when we come back. Oh, I could have waited. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I was going to say, we're <laughs> literally, I'm trying to land the plane, and Adam's like, let's set off fireworks uh, inside the cockpit. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, so we're going to take a quick <laughs> ad break, and when we come back, we will be doing our IDP flag plants. It's a living, breathing show, He's baby. He's looked at the camera about 180 times. Yeah, already. they're loving it, man. It's good they're he knows where it. his camera is. That's, a, that's, a, that's an improvement. So don't go anywhere, folks. We will be right back. Welcome back to the IDP show. Addy, we got some new tunes on the show tonight. A uh, little new Sugar Daisy mm. dropping. Our boys, they are back with a new EP, Corporate Fallout. It is on all of your streaming services out there. So, uh, yeah, four songs. Every single one of them is a smash hit per use. Mm -hmm. uh, 
thank you to the fellas for letting us, you know, use their amazing music. It really just takes the show up. Takes the 20 show notches. Yeah, to a whole new level. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're using, I think, three of the songs off of yeah. the uh, off the uh, EP tonight. Yeah, so you heard three of the four. I mean, just great stuff. Great stuff. Just Bobby. makes you want to just tap your toe. Oh, yeah. We know Addy has an unreal eye for talent, Bobo. He's also got an unreal ear. The only thing we know he does not have is a good sniffer. Yeah, unreal ear always has had an unreal ear. That's right. Unreal taste. Yes, unreal sir. taste. Just a great guy. Yep. Sweet. Got it all. Got total package. Yeah, sure. People say that. Yeah, people say that in the streets. <laughs> I have heard people come up to me and say that Adam really is the total package. Yeah, and I'm like, I, mean, I don't know you. What can this guy not do? Back up just a little bit. You know, when lots of people start saying it. You know, has to be true. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Adam, stop looking at the camera. You're making the folks <laughs> very uncomfortable. It's good that he knows where his camera is, though, Bobo. Like, I'm very proud of him mm -hmm. for graduating to that fact. This one's this one's on? No, it's the uh, it's the wide shot. Right. It's the red dot. You want to look for the red dot. That tells you where the camera is. Welcome back, folks. We are going to be doing our IDP flag plants. So we've each picked out three players, and we've put a sort of criteria on this player that we think they are going to achieve for 2022. So uh, good mix of players here. And I'm going to kick things off for us uh, with a player that I was slow and skeptical to buy in on. But you talk about the preseason and training camp, the drum beat from those two kind of coming together and giving you a very clear signal of what's going to happen in the face of uncertainty. I am going with my first flag plant, Nick Cross. The Indianapolis Colts safety will finish as a top 24 safety. Gentlemen, the case here I think is a pretty simple one. Cross is better than Kari Willis. Kari Willis now off to serve the Lord. We wish him the best. Average 12.8 points per game in 14 games in 2020 and 10.6 points per game in 11 games in 2021. Now, Cross is an absolute athletic freak. If you wonder why I feel comfortable saying Cross, at least long-term, kind of projects, uh, projects better as a safety prospect than Kari Willis. It's because of the athleticism. 99th percentile 40-yard dash, 43440, 99th percentile speed score. Willis was 67th percentile and 77th percentile in those two metrics. Cross is also an inch taller with longer arms. Babo, though. It's not just the size. It's not just the speed. We also love Gus Bradley, the Colts' new defensive coordinator. He turned Jonathan Abram into an IDP-relevant piece last season in Las Vegas, and that's saying something. Oh, yeah. So I like the fact that you have a defensive coordinator in the building who knows how to get the most out of their safeties. Abram finished 26 by total points among safeties in 2021. Now, the average for top 12 safeties by big three scoring was 12.04 points per game. The lowest of the top 12 was Minka Fitzpatrick at 11.67. Hmm. Abram averaged 11.78 points per game. He just didn't play enough games to finish top 24. Wow. So if you're making the case of sort of like, okay, Jonathan Abram in Gus Bradley's defense finished right outside the top 24 and would have been top 24 had he played enough games. That's kind of the first piece of the puzzle along with the athleticism. But boys, that preseason alignment for Nick Cross was so, so juicy. 49.1% of his snaps in the box, 15.8 in the slot, 3.5 along the defensive line for a sweet spot total of 68.4% of his snaps. And I think he is going to live here because neither Julian Blackman or Rodney McLeod have the frame to be that box safety like Nick Cross does. And not only did he play in those spots that we like, he graded so beautifully. 89.9 overall, 86.4 in coverage, 74.2 in run defense, and an 82 tackling grade with zero missed tackles shout out Macri for those details I'm not going crazy Rodney McLeod is still there this is a rookie but I'm very confident that Nick Cross is going to finish as a top 24 option Addy am I crazy no not at all and I mean and what's the ADP like mm -hmm. are you having to take him before the 24th I think even after the news started to break he was 
still going in the 30s or 40s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well after this. Yeah. And I feel like that's that's still probably his range. I mean, maybe maybe he's 24 to 30 now. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the usage, if it's going to be like that, I mean, we he, again, he also has the build for it. I mean, he, he's clearly going to be the guy that, that's going to be down there banging in the box. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's all lining up for him. Um, shout out to Kari Willis for, for doing this for him. It's very nice. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> clearing the runway for Nick Cross there. Uh, Kari Willis. Babo, the drumbeat has been steady out of Colts camp. Do you Are you on the Nick Cross train with us? You know, I was thinking earlier, too. Um, I think in most drafts, I've seen uh, Kenny Moore go ahead of Nick Cross. Wow. Um, you know, just because Kenny Moore, we love Kenny Moore. He plays in the slot a lot. He He's probably going to benefit also um, from Kari Willis's absence. But, no, nah, Nick Cross, you know, I was thinking on the way over here, could Nick Cross be the safety one out of this rookie class? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because he's going to get the role – Early on in the season, and I think that's the that's what you want to see, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like think the you have would be like what him or Brisker. Yeah. Brisker, I think Jalen Petrie is a guy getting a lot of love. Sounds like Cameron Bynum, mm-hmm. Mister Bye Bye Bynum, right? <laughs> that's right, right. <laughs> Still upset about that, folks. If you can't tell, uh, sounds like he's going to be the starter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think it's between Petrie and uh, Brisker and Nick Cross for that rookie safety one crown. There's also Kyle Hamilton. Kyle, Ham- Kyle Hamilton's lurking, but sure. his usage, I think, is going to be so up and down. But Nick Cross or Brisker are probably my votes today. Yes. Brisker looked amazing in the preseason as well. Yep. But I agree with you, Josh. Nick Cross, top 24 safety. Um, it happens a lot. It's hard for a rookie to really sneak into that top 12. That's pretty elite in your first year. Um, but top 24, he's going to see snaps. He's he's got the ability to. He has the size, and uh, you know, opportunity is going to be there for him. I I love it. I think the bigger issue too is like, what's Darius Leonard's year look like? You mentioned the name Bobby Okereke earlier that people need to know. Like, if you have Darius Leonard, go probably overpay right now for Bobby Okereke. I'm not saying like give a first, but if you were going to give a third, maybe throw a third and a fourth to somebody because I think Bobby Okereke could have a unreal season if Leonard were to miss significant time but what I was getting at also is if if Leonard and that linebacking core continues to be weird Cross could be a benefactor of that absolutely and I think he will be and so Nick Cross top 24 safety Addy why don't you kick us off here with your first guy you are going with one of our favorite bargains at the linebacker position who is your first flag plant for 2022 Josie Jewell top 15 linebacker so let's start by following the money. Uh, Jewel was the Broncos' fourth-round pick in the 2018 draft. He received a two-year, $11 million extension from Denver this offseason. That's not insignificant money, mm-hmm. folks. No. Yeah. And especially when you compare it with the other linebackers that are currently on the roster. Jonas Griffith, who we like, one year, 825 k Alex Singleton, one year, $1.1 million. Justin Sternad, he's still on his rookie deal. Um, he's making around 885 k a year. So Griffith and Singleton were both undrafted players. Justin Sternad was a fifth-round pick. So not only does Jewel make the most Skrilla of the group, he was the highest drafted as well. Wait, Adam, you forgot Baron Browning. Mm. No, I didn't. I never forget Baron. Don't you ever interrupt me again. <laughs> All right? There's a lot of voices in that head, folks. But uh, Baron Browning, yeah, their third-round pick from last year. He has now switched to edge. And, folks, I don't think that's going to change. Baron Browning posted a 77.8 PFF grade with a 90.3 pass rush grade this offseason. I'm sorry, this preseason. He has racked up nine pressures on 38 pass rush snaps for a 23.6 pressure rate. Adam, is that good? It's like what Micah Parsons was doing last year. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, so, also, I don't. we've, we've kind of discussed it. I've discussed it on Twitter I've been really interested in college production and how it translates to success in the NFL. Um, kind of similar to breakout age. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the, the folks are familiar with that, but we're looking for guys who um, are productive early on in their college career. And why is that important? Because we want to see 19, 20-year-old kids perform well against, you know, 22, 23-year-old kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's, that's something we've been keeping up and tracking with. Uh, recently and Josie Jewell very productive in college Um, he got playing time his freshman year 51 uh, total tackles appeared in 10 games 
but his second year, his sophomore year, 126 tackles. Then his junior year, 124 tackles. His senior year, 132 tackles. Guy finished with 433 college tackles. Um, so that's that's he's in a rare company there. Um, and we should mention he's stepping up his tackle totals while playing fewer games. Yeah. Yeah. Sophomore year, 14, then 13, then 12. Uh, so was averaging, I mean, what is that? That's over 10 tackles a game right. his senior year at Iowa. And yeah. also he added 10 sacks for his college career, um, 26 pass deflections, which should give you a little hint that this guy might be pretty good in pass coverage. Uh, so we got that on the resume. What about his grades? How is he graded in, in his NFL career? So 2018, 460 snaps, 61.7 PFF grade, 52.6 coverage grade. 2019, 214 snaps, 68.4 PFF grade, 46.0 coverage grade. 2020, this was the most snaps he ever played in his career. 1,011 snaps, 68.1 PFF grade, 65.5 coverage grade. Mm. And then last year, we know he got Took hurt. a big leap. I mean, small sample size. Of course, of course, yeah. of course. But 82 snaps played, 83.5 PFF grade, 84.6 coverage grade. So some other notable stats for Josie Jewell. He had a 6.6 career missed tackle rate. That's really good. That's on 17, you know, 1,767 snaps. Uh, very good. So last year, 6.6 would have ranked six best, uh, six best among all NFL linebackers. For more perspective, uh, Bobby Wagner has a 5.8 career missed tackle rate. Eric Kendricks has a 9.7. Levante David, 10.2. Uh, uh, let's do one more. Uh, Luke Keekley, 6.4 career missed tackle rate. So he's in good company. Pretty good company there. That's right. Um, in 2020, his, again, his first real full season, he was tied 13th among all linebackers for lowest average depth of tackle, and he finished ninth in run stops with 33. Wow. You Josie just, Jewell's you, pretty damn good. You just laid out a hell of a case, Addy. He's pretty damn good, and he's never really has opportunity until now. And we see what's on the roster they tried to bring in Joe Schobert. That didn't work. Josie Jewell has a real chance this year. I mean, he's going he's gonna to play the majority of the snaps. I'd imagine he's going to play over 90%. We're looking at potentially 150 tackles for Josie Jewell. And we've mentioned the, the cost, right? We talked about the... That's the best part about, about 50, everything. 60th linebacker off the board. Just insanity. And sometimes I think the mistake here is to assume that when we talk about these bargains and these guys we're getting at such great value that they're not that great of players. Maybe they're just in really, you know, primo situations that nobody's quite figured out yet. But Josie Jewell, not only is he in a primo position, he might actually be a pretty good linebacker as well. Yeah, his problem has just been staying healthy. That's right. An opportunity in front of him. He's had other guys in front of him, but um, – that's cleared out of the way, and we're going to finally get to see what he's made of. And, again, Denver paid him well. I mean, he is by far the highest-paid linebacker on the roster. We've we read the beats all year long. None of them have ever changed. He's the LB1. Mm -hmm. So the ADP never made sense at all this whole offseason. His might be more out of whack than anyone. Yeah, I mean, we did see it start to creep up once, you know, we, we've been hyping this guy up a ton. Um, but he's never been taken anywhere near his potential finish. Exactly. But even even now, he is still a value. I mean, you get, you maybe get him now as LB25. That's still a value because, yep. again, I think he's finishing top 15. Top 15, Bobo. What say you? I love it. You know, I think this is a big question that a lot of people are asking. There's a lot of people who want to know, um, you know, who the linebacker to own out of Denver is going to be. And it is interesting that they brought in – um, Joe Schobert, I think they probably just brought him in for depth. Um, I think the more telling thing for me is that they're going to leave Baron Browning at edge, um, supposedly. I mean, we're not into the actual, you know, real NFL season yet. But Browning showed some pretty good linebacking play, you know, on-ball linebacking. But then when they move him off-ball and they show this type of pressure right in the preseason and they say, look – we're going to leave you out there because we still believe that Jewel can rack up tackles and can lead our defense here in the middle. Um, I think that's a very that's a very telling sign there from the uh, from the Denver Broncos defense. Probably a pretty good reason why they got rid of Malik Reed. Exactly. You know. Um, also, I, I did have a breakout age actually written out, so let's just clarify kind of in case people are so confused. I'm not always the best at explaining things. Uh, the breakout age: the younger a person is when he/she first becomes a leader in their respective field. 
the more likely that person is to go on to become phenomenal at their craft. Following this logic, Frank Dewpoint and Sean Siegel first examined each wide receiver's breakout age on Rotoviz. So shouts to those fellas. Mm -hmm. But that's what it is. We want to see, because it's a leading indicator that they are going to be successful, and not just successful, but phenomenally successful, top of their field, if they do it at a really young age. Yes. And on the ranks now, we are going to have all these college stats and we're going to have college notes laid out for you so you can see how all these top IDPs performed and, and if they did it early in their career. And, and you're going to notice a lot of our favorite studs mm -hmm. are, are really, really good early Broke on. out early. And yeah. I, I think that defensive line is going to be better for the Broncos than it has been for a while. You've got a healthy Bradley Chubb. You've got now Randy Gregory, who hopefully is healthy also. Mm -hmm. You're going to be bringing Baron Browning off the edge. Draymond Jones is going to be inside. Um, Jonathan Cooper's still there, too. I yes. mean, they're, they're not. Like, yep. people talk about mm -hmm. this team like they're not that good or they don't have a lot of talent on, on um, the line. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they have a little like you know they have a lot of like just underrated guys. Yep, Pat Sertain, Justin Simmons, uh, Kareem Jackson. That's a better that's a better defense than people give them credit yep. for. All right, so there you go, Josie Jewell, top fifteen linebacker. I'm with you, Addy. I think uh, when you look at all of the kind of stars together, it paints a constellation in the sky of a top fifteen linebacker in the form of Josie Jewell. Hey boys, go with words, and I'm here for it. Bobo, your first flag plant. Uh, kick us off here with your first guy. It is a player that I think our listeners are going to be very familiar with. Yes, sir. Let's get on I-65 and travel north to the great state of Wisconsin. Let's not. We like it down here in the south. I was going to say. We like Kentucky. the country ham and sweet tea, baby. Sure. Kentucky's just fine. Sure. Once it gets colder, we'll come up and visit. Actually, no, that'd be a bad time to visit. Yeah, we, won't, we won't visit. We'll pretend we did. We'll put on a cheese head, and we'll, uh, we'll cheer for the Rashawn Gary. Top 12 edge in 2022. I love it. Speak on it. Rashawn Gary is going to be this year's Brian Burns, but better. Production-wise, I really think that Gary could produce more than Burns. Um, but maybe even more importantly, I think that the national media will start to see the elite edge that Rashawn Gary is becoming. I think that a little bit in 2021, um, the national media, you started hearing some of these announcers start to start to clamor a little bit about Brian Burns and, and how elite he was becoming. Um, I really think that Rashawn Gary is going to walk into that category this year. We have Zadarius Smith. He is now in Minnesota. Uh, and Gary will not only be playing opposite Preston Smith, but will also continue to see a high snap percentage. Um, just like last year when Zadarius was out dealing with his, uh, his back issue, the rest of the players that he's playing with there on the line. Devonta Wyatt, rookie, another defensive tackle that I really think that people need to be paying attention to in uh, in dynasty leagues. Preston Smith, who I think is better than people give him credit for. Kenny Clark, Dean Lowry, another guy that I really like, and then the uh, scheme buster himself, Quay Walker, is going to be there potentially coming off the edge. Who knows what they're going to do there with Quay Walker? I can't wait till it's week one and both Quay and Devondre Campbell play like ninety five percent of the oh, snaps. We're going to be let's go not we're, fun. We're going to be dunking yeah. on fools. <laughs> Rashawn Gary's PFF grades, if anybody cares about that kind of stuff, eighty nine point three overall PFF grade in twenty twenty one. 68% run defense grade and an 88% pass rush grade in 2021. Rashawn Gary had 23 solos and 12 assisted tackles, nine and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, and 81 total pressures in 2021. He's looking lean in the preseason. If you're into hype, if you're into the camp hype, everybody's talking about how he is just setting up camp, living in the backfield of these uh, offensive linemen's uh, you know, trying to protect the quarterback. Green Bay exercised Gary's fifth-year option this year, which also means that Gary is playing for a contract extension. That's something that I honestly believe that we probably need to be paying more attention to. I would like to see Gary flirt with about 60 tackles this year that would increase his floor while still holding that ability to rack up tackles for loss and sacks. If Green Bay, in my opinion, is going to excel in 2022 like I had them in my predictions doing, not only are our players like Christian Watson, Romeo Dubes going to have to help produce for Aaron Rodgers with their lack of veteran presence on the offense, but the defense is going to be looking at the fifth-year edge, Gary, to set the tone for the defense 
if this team is going to make a run in 2022. I think Kyle B. just passed out somewhere in a recliner uh, <laughs> listening to that segment, Bobo. So thank you. You're welcome. Uh, although a lot of Packers hey, fans. Shout out to Kyle B. Fella shot a 77, I believe, recently. His Ooh, best woo! round ever. Kyle, we love you, man. Hell of a round, baby. More to come. Hat tip. Uh-huh. Just getting better with age, Bobo. Oh, yeah. We love Fun to wine. see it. Just like a good cheese. Just aging sure. like some Nice bring. Good bring back. Good bring back. Put that cheese out on the counter and let it age. Yeah. Thank you for cracking yet another beer, Adam. You're welcome. <laughs> Top 12 for Rashawn Gary. <laughs> I mean, I think this is a, a slam dunk, right? A, mm-hmm. We're assuming health with all of these, of yep. course. But, I mean, Rashawn Gary is set up to absolutely smash. And I think the comparison there is apt to Brian Burns because, like you said, we saw Burns hit this kind of next level nationally as people started to realize this guy's really good, yep. right? Yep. And with Burns, it was playing mm-hmm. in Carolina. Not a huge market for NFL coverage or national attention. Obviously, the Packers get plenty of love and plenty of attention nationally, but he was always living in Zadarius Smith's shadow. So now, with Smith out the door Mm -hmm. and Preston Smith still there to kind of help hold up the other side of that line, I think he is going to feast Mm -hmm. in 2022. How many sacks do you see him getting? Nine and a half last year. Nine and a half last year. I could see double digits. Yeah. I could see 10. 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Let's push it, baby. Let's do it. Love it. I'm all about it. I don't see... It's like I wonder sometimes when these things just make too much sense, Addy. It's like, are we missing something? But I don't think we're missing anything with Rashawn Gary. I think he's the total package, real deal. Yeah, a defense is better now. Even though they lost Darius Smith, you bring in someone like Quay Walker. um, And then you have those guys like Rashawn Gary that are going to take that next leap uh, yeah because they're still so young but yeah green bay's defense is in a great spot also Devonte wide's there now yeah yeah wrecking shit so um and keep in mind um zadaria smith didn't play any last year he played maybe towards the end of the year a little bit he was out all year with that back yeah um so anyways i agree i think the when they brought the smith bros in that was kind of the big like let's talk about this let's talk about these edges that they have fun and, marketing and preston's okay but uh Rashawn gary got next that's right. Rashawn Gary, top this is 12 his fourth edge. year, correct? They just picked up his fifth year option. So he's going into his fifth year. Okay. Yep. So there we go. Rashawn Gary, I love to see it. Let's move now to my next flag plant. And uh, to do that, we are going to be moving back to the AFC South and looking at a linebacker. Speaking of Kyle B., that Kyle actually just picked in the football guys flag plants to be a top 15 linebacker. I am going to take it one step further and say Mm -hmm. that David long Titans linebacker is going to be a top 12 linebacker this season. Let's start with something very important here. Gentlemen, we talk about clout chasing. We already know David long has the Nate Tice stamp of approval from the breakout episode. We did earlier this off season And I went back and I looked at that article that we put up from the Nate Tice episode. And here's what he said about David Long. He's a tackle machine because his play recognition is so advanced. So a couple other factors working in Long's favor. Bobo, you mentioned the contract situation. Long's contract is expiring, so he'll be looking to get paid after this season. Let's look back at 2021 from weeks five through nine. Long played 100% of the snaps except for week nine when it was 88.5, and he averaged 17.97 points per game by big three scoring. Playing 58% of the total snaps for the season, he recorded 77 total tackles. The dude would have been a lock, an absolute stone-cold lock for 130, 140 tackles had he played the entire season. He also had two interceptions now a top 12 linebacker I always like to go back and benchmark this just to make sure that I'm not too far off with these kind of uh, predictions here but a top 12 linebacker averaged 14.55 points per game in 2021 by big three scoring the lowest average was Deion Jones lol Mm. at 12.82 points per game so the question really is can David Long clear 13 points per game that's that threshold you need to hit to be top 12 at the linebacker position in 2019 going back a few more years Jayon brown averaged 14.44 points per game in 16 games 
Now, you look at the physical comparison like we did between Nick Cross and Kari Willis. Jayon Brown, six foot, 226 pounds. David Long, 5'11", 227 pounds. So very close physically to what Jayon Brown was. The only competition there is Zach Cunningham. He is a monkey wrench, I will admit, but I think Long is clearly the better player. So if someone is going to get 85% plus of the snaps, it's David Long, top 12 linebacker. Give it to me all day. Addy, what say you? You know I love it, baby. He's he's been one of the guys that I name drop on uh, name drop on the reg with Josie Jewell, Matt Milano, those types. I love him. I mean the the ADP is beautiful. Um, and again, even though it's it's rising, he's probably he's probably going in that fifteen to twenty range now at this point. Still a value. So yep. we're probably not going to draft him anymore. We're going to find better values. Yep. But I mean, if you were drafted earlier in the off season, you probably have some David Long shares, of course. So, Bobo, this is why we say even though three down linebackers are becoming more and more scarce, you don't necessarily have to overpay to get you a three down linebacker because there are guys like the Josie Jules, the Matt Milano's, the David Long's that you can take at value later in your drafts and fill that three down void in your heart. Absolutely. You know, and uh, in my opinion, David Long is going pretty late in drafts, even in our best balls. Um He's kind of the he's kind of the guy that um, gets picked, kind of like a Shaq Thompson. You're like, dang, that was a pretty Forgot good pick. He was and, there, and that was a lot later than I was really anticipating him being. Uh, I'm trying to look here and see. Um, I'm looking at Zach Cunningham's PFF grades, is what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm pr- in particular looking at his coverage grade of 39.3. Um, now I want to look up David Long and actually see. Um, if you could vamp for a minute. Please. Yeah, I was going to say, David Long, even if he wasn't necessarily the best at uh, his position when it comes to coverage, he had to be better than, I think, Zach Cunningham, who's historically down in the, the cellar yeah. so, with the PFF grades. So David Long's overall grade was uh, 67.4. His run defense was 61. His pass rush was actually 77%. And then he did have a 65% coverage grade. So that's year. pretty so solid across the board. We've been above through, average. We've been through this. We know what Zach Cunningham is. He's already been in Houston for years. He's had his time. We know what he is at this point. He's a backup to David Long. David Long's going to be on the field. He's going to see the snaps. Top 12, top 12 linebacker. You know, I love his athleticism. He's a freak. He's, a, he's an athletic freak. Super fast. Um, tons of speed. I, I really like this pick, Josh. Go back and listen to the Nate Tice episode and just fast forward to the part about David Long. He was a huge fan. Oh, yeah. That was a guy that jumped out to Nate when he was watching this Titans defense. So that kind of perked my ears up when we did that episode of like, I need to go back and look into David Long. And the more I look, the more I love yep. the situation there. Rashawn Evans gone, Jayon Brown gone. It's just him and Zach Cunningham. And yes, I understand. Like I said, Zach Cunningham is a monkey wrench, but David Long is clearly the better player. And I'm planting my flag that he is going to be the guy for this Titans linebacking core. All the film guys love him. That's right. Yeah. I follow James Foster. I follow James Foster, who does a lot of the Tennessee Titans stuff. Um, And he, yeah. Big fan. He says that's his first linebacker he checks out every single week is David Long. Love that. That's high praise. We may see some early down Cunningham uh, stuff, but that coverage grade for Long's not. He's going to be on the field on third down. That's right. All right, Addy, let's move to the second flag plant for you and talk about, I mean, these are guys that we've talked about before. I feel like you're bringing up some of these values because these are your favorite types of players. But the reason that we mention values in the off season is because of the potential finish that we could see for these guys. And your next one is a very clear example of that. Who's your next flag plant? Yep. We've talked a lot about this guy, Mr. Jordan Whitehead. I think he's going to be a top 12 safety this year. Not, that's a little mild on I think he's going to finish like top six. I mm-hmm. agree. So he signed a two year, $14 and million dollar deal this off season. Um, was never really that productive in Tampa Bay. And and I don't think that's really his fault. It's just they had a lot of talent there. They kind of didn't yeah. really use them the way we want to use safety. We know ADP. Winfield Jr. is a baller. We know that Logan he's got, Ryan's a baller. He's got Devin White and Levante David in front of him, two pretty okay linebackers. Um, he averaged 10.8 points per game in Big 3 scoring last year. Uh, that was 41st among all defensive backs. However, he did average 14 and a half points per game from weeks seven through 16. So love the way he came on to finish the year. He had the lowest average depth of tackle among all safeties with like three yards. 
Um, so that means he is close to the line of scrimmage, even though really Tampa Bay wasn't using him like that. Let's look at the career usage in Tampa Bay. 300, I'm sorry, 3,294 total snaps. Um, for his career, he has played 1,220 in the box, 1,213 at free safety, 518 in slot, 196 on the line, and 144 corner. So that is 58.7% of his snaps in the sweet spot. Mm. Okay. That sounds pretty good, Adam. That's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. But let's see what he's doing in New York. And, of course, again, uh, small sample small size, size, but we know, we know. Uh, so the 2022 preseason usage here in New York, 23 total snaps, 11 in the box, six in the slot, two on the line, only four at free safety. That is 83% of his snaps in the sweet spot. Wow. Woo! So if these trends continue in the regular season, he will play 124% of his snaps in the sweet spot. Exactly. I know math. Yes, I know sir. how it works. But I mean, this is this is amazing. This is exactly the usage we were, we were hoping for. I mean, the other safeties there are Lamarcus Joyner, a guy that's always played deep. Yeah. Um, Ashton Davis, a guy that primarily plays deep. So I mean, it is set up for Jordan Whitehead to be the safety that plays closer to the line of scrimmage. I mean, we're seeing that with the usage in the preseason. Like I mentioned earlier about breakout age, Jordan Whitehead had one of the best uh, breakout ages. His freshman year at Pitt, the dude racked up 110 tackles. Had seven TFLs, had a half a sack, an INT, six PDs as a freshman. Mm-hmm. Now, as the, a numbers, freshman. the numbers didn't get better, but he also missed. He only played nine games, um, whereas he played 13 his freshman year. He played nine his sophomore year. He played nine his, his uh, junior year, and then he made the leap to the league. Mm-hmm. But that early production is there at a very young age. I mean, Literally, it's like him and, and Derwin James. Those are the two best that I've, I've come across so far as far as mm-hmm. early breakout ages among safeties. Um, so, I mean, it's just all there. I, yeah. Marcus May, a, a guy that we liked for IDP for a while, he every year it was about 1,100 snaps he's, he's played. Uh, he didn't do it last year because he got hurt. He got course, hurt. But he yep. was trending that way. So, again, I think we're looking at career numbers across the board. I think we're going to see over 1,000 snaps. I mean, probably closer to like 1,100, honestly, um, but just career numbers. I mean, he this this guy, all the all the all the quotes coming out of camp. This guy's been a leader, one of the best players on the defense. Um, you should be very excited about Jordan Whitehead. An upgrade over Marcus May, just entering his prime. Yep. The preseason usage is ideal. Mm-hmm. The money is nice as well, Bobo. We talked about those best balls that we were in, and the pos- the position specific best balls. Yeah. Only linebacker, only DL, only DB. Mm-hmm. You can't hide. Yeah. You can't fade. You have to man up and just take the guys that you like. And the one player I reached for in the DB draft was Jordan Whitehead. And I have... Ain't a reach, baby. No yeah. regrets. You know, the only place you're going to hear this, Josh, is if you listen to this podcast. Who else out there is hyping Jordan Whitehead? Who else out there is trying to tell you about his breakout age and about how he's playing 83% of his preseason snaps in the sweet spot. You're not hearing that anywhere else. You're going to hear it here. And guess what? By week five, it's going to be too late, and everybody else is going to already have him, or he's going to fetch too high of of a price tag. So if you're listening, you can go get him now. Yeah, if you're in a shallow league, he's probably on your waivers. Yep. You know, I mean, this is a guy that, again, I think he has top 10 upside. So whatever safety you're probably trotting out there right now, he's yep. probably going to be better than them. The other thing, too, is uh, it's C.J. Mosley there. You know, their linebackers in New York are pretty gross. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. I think you're right. I think LaMarcus Joyner, the, I mean, fragile man that he is. I mean, how old is that guy at this point? I think 30, he's 40, 48 years old. Yeah, I thought I thought so. <laughs> but I, I do like Ashton Davis. I think he's fun for like a, you know, deep safety type guy. But, you know, Jordan Whitehead jumping in there. Man, I think this is great. Well, I would like to know, like, I mean, where is he going, do you think, in some of these drafts? I mean, he's after D- DB30. Oh, stupid late. DB30. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we did the, uh, we have the best ball data. Yeah, you want to pull that up real quick? Yes, but I, I know, I mean, even in the DB specific one, I think I took him in the third round, the fourth round. Yeah. I mean, it felt like a reach because I, I said it felt like a reach because I thought I could get him coming back in the next round, but 
there's some folks in there I know who listen to our show, and yeah. I was like, I think yeah. we had just talked up Jordan Whitehead. Yeah. And I was like, if I don't take this guy, he is absolutely going to be sniped. Uh, but, yeah, that's the beauty of a lot of these flag plants that Adam is bringing up here. Like I mentioned, these were stupid values. Mm -hmm. I mean, like we mentioned, even with us kind of beating the Josie Jewel drum this offseason, linebacker 50, yeah. linebacker 58, linebacker 60. I mean, just stupid, stupid deep. What do we got for Jordan Whitehead? DB 27, DB 31, DB 35, DB 31, DB 39. Probably a DB40. DB36. Boy. Wow. wow. Sometimes going outside of a mm. top 36 DB, that's ridiculous. And yeah. sometimes these type of players that move teams, people forget about. You know, they just don't get as hype about it. And they're like, well, Jordan Whitehead's not in Tampa anymore. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love that. I'm just trying to mentally process right now all the teams that uh, I don't have Jordan Whitehead on. And I could go and uh, make a quick offer. And somebody's going to be like, yeah, wow, cool. You fourth. really should. You should be Get offering your offer absolutely. in you right now. You should be now. sending picks for this guy. Yes. If you're, if you're What's need he a safety. Worth? What's he worth? I mean, you can probably get this guy for a third. Uh, or yeah, I mean, I if you want to fourth. overpay, sure. probably yeah. fourth. Yeah. Send him a 23 fourth. Go grab your Jordan Whitehead. That's yeah. right. I love it. Baba, let's keep the safety train rolling here and talk about your next flag plant. Okay. Funny enough, a guy that Adam brought up in absentia, Last year on the flag plant episode, That's and right. you are carrying that torch forward. Who is our next flag plant for 2022? We're going to talk about it. Xavier McKinney, top six safety Love in it. 2022. Love it. Look, I sent this flag plant via our big three thread to Josh and Adam over a week ago. The, the date is important. And I have to give Adam some credit, as McKinney was one of his flag plants in 2021. And I don't feel as if Adam was wrong in his plant, but maybe, maybe he was just a little too early. The flag plant a week ago came before the earth-shattering IDP news that New York football giants have released the tackle monster himself, Blake Martinez. But this wasn't really too much of a surprise, was it? Over the past couple years, we have seen the release of the IDP greats like we've talked about, Jalen Smith, Zach Cunningham, and now Blake Martinez. So this is also a side note that while PFF scores are not IDP scoring metrics, they are imperative to helping managers determine who is actually a good IDP player versus who is someone out there just racking up tackles. So let's look at the PFF grades for Xavier McKinney. 75% overall grade, a 78% coverage grade, a 68% run defense grade, and a 57% pass rush rate. At six foot one, 200 pounds, not only does McKinney have the, dis the size to cover receivers, but also has the ability to make the run stops when necessary. McKinney also recently was graced with the helmet decal that is giving to only a handful of safeties in the league the green dot. Ooh, that precious green Wait. dot. So projecting, we like to project here. What does all this mean? It means that McKinney will be on the field every down as the play caller. More snaps equals more opportunities. It means some very mediocre linebacking play in front or beside of McKinney as Martinez is gone and Tay Crowder is hashtag not good. Not good. Also in Dynasty, keep an eye on Micah McFadden, who looks exactly like Blake Martinez, just 10 years younger. That was like a disclaimer at the end of a drug ad. <laughs> and it means that McKinney has the ascending stats to show that his biggest season yet is coming. I just think we see enough stars aligning this year to see an elite year out of Xavier McKinney. Addy, what I like about this is all of the factors here that Bobo mentioned – I think the one that is intriguing the most to me is the alignment. And I know we mentioned this on the episode with Jace. What percentage of snaps is he going to have in that sweet spot? And I mentioned I'd be surprised if it was less than 50% this season. I know we saw that number flip-flop from his rookie year to that second year when he played more deep safety. Mm -hmm. But even though I expect the sweet spot usage to be there, especially with the release of Blake Martinez, this just tells me they want Xavier McKinney to go back to what he was doing his rookie year. But let's say that doesn't happen. 
Xavier McKinney is in that same box for me as your Antoine Winfield Juniors, your Javon Hollins, your Minka Fitzpatricks, who are playmakers no matter where they line up. And I think if we do see the stars align for the alignment, look what I did there unintentionally. Boy, it could be wheels all the way up for Xavier McKinney in 2022. Yeah. I mean, nothing really to add there, dude. I mean, that's that's exactly what it is. I mean, uh, and, and why did the usage flip that second year? Well, there was Jabril Peppers and mm -hmm. uh, what's his face? Uh, Logan Ryan. Logan Ryan, mm -hmm. who's now gone. So, I mean, both of those guys fill that role. You know, they didn't really need Xavier to do that stuff. But um, even in spite of that, he, the dude still put up 94 tackles. Mm -hmm. That's right. And he had, what, five picks? And Because, again, he's a playmaker. He's That's a what playmaker. he does. Yep. I mean, you read you read about, you know, this team and, and who's the good players on the team. It's always going to come back to Xavier McKinney. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. It's, it, I love it. I love it. I Xavier love it. McKinney. Jordan Whitehead, some of our favorite safeties. Let's move now to the edge rusher position and talk about my next flag plant here. And I've been I've been pounding the drum on this one for a little bit here, but I'm going with Daniil Hunter as a top six edge rusher. I'm trying to ramp up in terms mm -hmm. of spiciness here, but then I talked to a few folks here. I talked to Macri. I talked to Tripp just to sort of get – the kind of lay of the land with the new defensive coordinator and how the scheme change might impact Neil Hunter and kind of just in a roundabout way, I thought I might actually be a little too low on this flag plant for Daniil Hunter based on the consensus out there, but I'm going top six edge Hunter was already trending this way in 2021 y'all before he got hurt and went on IR. It's a long season. I get it. But I think we overlook that sometimes. Average 16.8 points per game in six full games with a 40-point game in week two. In his last two healthy seasons, 2019, 16.67 points per game. And in 2018, 16.76 points per game. Now, the average of the top six true edge guys in 2021, so no Micah Parsons in there, 17.04. So... Hunter will need his best season, best season ever to crack, crack top six, but I think he's in line for it. He's fully healthy. He's coming off a pec injury, but in the four seasons before that, y'all, he played 16 games mm. every single season. Don't fall into this trap of thinking that Daniil Hunter is injury prone. He has been healthy. He's had a couple bad years, but don't let that, dissuades you into thinking that he's a guy who always misses time. couple factors here that I want to bring up I think are very important for this flag plant in particular. We have Zadarius Smith. We talked about him. His addition by subtraction with Rashawn Gary. Mm -hmm. But now this is the best edge mate that Daniil Hunter has had since Everson Griffin. Mm. In his two seasons with the Packers, I love this stat here. This is one of my favorite nuggets from Macri. He just was able to start pulling this data, and it's so much fun. In his two seasons with the Packers, Smith ranked second among edge defenders in creating sacks for his teammates with 11. Wow. So we talk about why is it important to have a guy alongside you because they can do things like this. They can create sack opportunities at a high rate. I mentioned I talked to Tripp about the new scheme. New defensive coordinator there, Ed Donatel. Tripp said, I, I asked him, I was like, are you worried about the pass rush opportunities? Are you worried about the snaps? How is this going to impact Daniil Hunter? He said, and I quote, I think Hunter will get all the pass rush snaps he can handle. I wouldn't be surprised if he played 900 total snaps. I do think the team will blitz less. I also worry that his high tackle totals he routinely piled up under Zimmer aren't sustainable. So I think the overall DL edge one upside he had before isn't there, but I think a top five season is well within reach. And I agree. Give me Daniil Hunter top six edge. Addy as the Vikings fan in the room. How are you feeling about Daniil Hunter? Cosign. That's Cosign. the real ass shit you just said. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Saying memes out loud, that's a sign of mental health right there, folks. That's right. Internet has really ruined my brain. <laughs> a lot of holes in that brain sure. from looking at the internet sure. for too long. We're going to look back on the internet like we did on cigarettes. <laughs> what, do, what, what were we thinking? 
Truly believe that. If you want to look at the internet, you have to go outside into a special area yep. and look at the internet yep. there. Can you hurry this up, Josh? Me and Adam need to go smoke real quick. Yes, sir. So, Addy, <laughs> d- you put the Vikings in as your NFC North champion. So, I have to think you're feeling pretty good uh, about this team, this defense, new coaching staff. That's it's, the key. It's a talented roster, I think, man. Just, yeah. Juice is back in the building, man. Zimmer's one of those coaches that, I mean. Talk about a hard ass. You respect. Yeah, we hate that stuff. We hate coaches like that. Those old school coaches. At the end, I really do think you wanted Kirk Cousins to die of COVID. I think when so. When Cousins was talking up, like, if I die, dies, like, Zimmer's like, I hope you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really hope you do. Zimmer's just a buzzkill, man. So, yeah. I mean, getting, getting new blood in there, someone like O'Connell who comes from such a you know, an awesome background just coming off a Super Bowl win. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you got you got a great offense. I mean, you really do. I mean, you have, you know, Justin Jefferson, probably the best receiver in the league. Mm. I mean, it's a I think it's a debate between him and Jamar Chase at this point. Adam Thielen, still severely mm-hmm. underrated. I mean, I know that he's getting up there in age, but again, this guy came on late. Um this has turned into an offensive podcast. <laughs> it really has, and that's okay. <laughs> but Thielen's great. K.J. Osborne, great. I mean, um, you got Irv Smith is healthy. I mean, Dalvin Cook is still Dalvin Cook. I mean, that, that team is just deep on offense. Uh, and, and the defense, it's, it, the defense has always been good. Um, and I don't think it's, it's gotten any worse. I mean, you, you added Zadarius Smith and you added Lewis Seen to it. So, I mean, and you add, don't, under, don't overlook Jordan Hicks. Jordan Hicks, too. Yeah. Let's not True. forget, like, another the veteran l- leading there. tackler for Arizona Cardinals last season. And he looks a lot better as the second fiddle. That's you know, right. As opposed to the first. I mean, it, being playing next to Eric Kendricks, that's, that's a nice gig right there. So, um, yeah, man. I mean, they've just across the board, I mean, they've, 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 they've made improvements mm-hmm. on, um, defense, offense, and then you got a better coach in there, I think. So, I mean, yeah, I love Minnesota, what they got going on. Mm-hmm. Love it. Not just because I'm a fan either. I'm usually trash. Usually down, team. yeah. Truly. Like, so, oh, God, what are we doing? I'm excited. Why are we doing First this? time in a long time yeah. about this team. That's fun, but it's good to be excited about your team. Those Everson Griffin, Linval Joseph years were fun for Daniil Hunter as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like he could roll the clock back just a touch um, for us this year and, uh, and be elite for us. Top six. I love it, Josh. Well, thank you. As Addy kicks his camera. (laughs) For the eighth time. For the eighth time. It's all right. Yeah, I think Daniil Hunter, like we mentioned, was already on this track. I think if he had played a full season, we would have gotten that top six finish. Of course, has the pec injury, so I'm not worried about reoccurrence. This isn't. It's not a back. There's no fusion. Yeah. Over with. The, the scary stuff is in the rearview mirror. This is not an injury that is likely to repeat and derail yet another season. So side note, are y'all trusting Zadarius Smith any this year? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm okay with gravity. I think if we're saying this is, and I do believe it, the best edge mate that Hunter has had since Everson Griffin. Yeah. Griffin was very usable in those seasons oh, yeah. in Minnesota. Yeah. Hey, also everyone remember Keenan Allen was one at one point in his career. He was injury yeah. prone. Mm-hmm. So, so was Frank Gore. Frank Gore as well. Iron Man Frank Gore. That's some, that's just some unlucky. Good, that's some good YouTube time right there. Go look at some of uh, Keenan's like cross up routes where he just makes people look dumb. Oh my god, that's one of my favorites. All right, well let's move to a player, Addy, that you have kind of become synonymous with. I think at this point, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's head down to South Beach and talk about your next flag plant. A certain edge rusher down there. Who's your next guy? Going to take his talents mm-hmm. to South Beach, baby. Had to nut up. That's right. You were putting out the uh, – you, you had a different player in here uh-huh. originally. I think it was um, – another Probably was another safety, Justin yeah. Reed probably. Yes, it was yes. Justin Reed. And then you put out the Jalen – we talked about uh, Jalen Phillips on the trip episode. You put out a tweet and you said, I got to make him a flag plant now. So here we are. Got to do it. I mean, and this is the type of guy that I love. I mean, if you look at the profile, we're going to start with the profile of Jalen Phillips. Unfortunately for Jalen Phillips, the college production – Little weird. He went to UCLA, dealt with a lot of injuries early on in his career. I think there was a point where he retired from football, was not going to play anymore. Mm. Transferred to Miami. The rest is history. We look at the profile. Um, 6'6", 260, uh, 260 pounds. Um, 4.6340, that's 86 percentile. 113.2 speed score, that's 86 percentile. Mm. Burst score, 123.7, that's 83rd. 
Agility score, 84th percentile. Um, getting comped to, funny enough, to Neil Hunter. Oh, that's a great comp. Wow. Love to see that. Yeah. Uh, RAS score, 9.86. And again, those are out of 10, so that's pretty solid there. <laughs> Um, that sounds good, Adam. Is that good? Did you break good. it? <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. But yeah, this guy was Miami's 18th overall pick. And also, side note, Miami did they? I mean, they crushed that draft last year. Yeah. Jalen Phillips, uh, Jalen Waddle, mm -hmm. Javon Holland. That's right. Jeez. Golly. Um, so 2021. I mean, if you look at the PFF stuff, it's not that great. 53.7 PFF grade, 61.3 pass rush grade, 39 pressures on 402 pass rush attempts. That works out to a 9.7 pressure rate. So, again, those aren't blowing anyone away, but this is a rookie. I don't think you should look too much into these advanced metrics because they're figuring things out. They're adjusting to the league. Also, Miami was kind of weird last year with yeah. Flores. Again, another one of these hard-ass coaches who I just don't really care for. Mm -hmm. I'm glad he's out the, out the door just because, I don't know, I feel like those types don't really appreciate the Jalen Phillips. Mm -hmm. The chain wears, yeah. You know the 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 drip. There goes Jalen to hyping up the crowd with a turnover chain again. You're on the bench, Jalen. You missed here. your assignment because you were being too swaggy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that tracks. That makes sense. So I'm I'm glad he's gone. Honestly, and I like what uh, your boy. Uh, what are we calling him? Mark McDonald at this point. <laughs> I think Mark. Norm McDonald. <laughs> I like the vibe he's bringing, even though yeah. he's a little quirky and and, and weird. He's, I like the vibe. Yeah, I don't know that Jalen Phillips is like super hyped to run out yeah. of the tunnel with old Norm McDonald, but, I feel like but he, he feels like he can be more of himself. Yes, yeah. you know? yes. I think he appreciates folks like Jalen Phillips. Yeah. So, you know, all the metrics, they aren't there yet, but again, we saw the flashes. I mean, if you look at weeks, let's pull up the let's pull up the log real Get quick. that log out. Real quick, guys. Real quick. Log it. All right. So if we look at weeks eleven through thirteen, guy had seventeen point game, forty three point three point game, twenty five point seven five. Yeah. So we've seen this ceiling. We just need to see him consistently string these weeks together, and I think we're going to. I mean, all the news has been this guy is the best player on the field. Um, reading some of the quotes, here's a here's a quote from a pretty decent left tackle, um, Teron Armstead. Jalen Phillips, too. The things he's done, especially in the last two weeks, you can see the game starting to slow down for him. Athletically, he's a freak. He's made in a lab, so just watch his progression. I'm excited to see him continue to evolve as a pass rusher, learning more seeing things better. We've got some guys that can get after the passer. So um, let's also look at the 2022 preseason, which has been very, very nice. And again, small sample size, like we've said three times tonight, mm -hmm. four pressures on 26 pass rush attempts. That's 15.3 pressure rate. That's like similar to what Von Miller put up last year. 26.11 percentage. That is elite folks. 71.7 mm -hmm. pass rush grade. It's all lining up for him. And again, People are scared off by this freak, this guy that's made in the lab because of Melvin Ingram, Trey Flowers, Rip Van Winkle. Wake up, folks. This is how we win. Uh, this you. is how we do it. Well, he did it. I was waiting for that. Drop the beat. This is how we do this is how we it. Do. You think I have that on the board? <laughs> you guys, this is a magic board, these guys think. Uh, it just has any song available at any time. No, I think that's what, and Bobby, we'll talk about yours as well. Yeah. There, Your next one here, there is a, a certain amount of enjoyment, moxie, that I think you have to carry into an NFL season mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, even the best prognosticators are maybe 60% right. There's a whole lot of unknown that we go into every season up against. There's a lot of things that are going to happen that we can't see coming. And so the way I like to approach fantasy is I want to attach myself to the outcomes that are fun, that I would like to see. That makes sense, right? The ones that just because it hasn't happened in the past and maybe there are some obstacles to it happening at the current moment, if we fast forward four months, do we see this as an outcome that has a distinct possibility of happening? And if there were solid veterans, if Jalen Phillips was on the Vikings with Daniil Hunter and Zadarius Smith, we're not calling for him to be a top 12 edge, right? Yeah. Correct. But are we scared off, like Adam said, by the guys in front of him 
No. Yeah. I just keep going back to the fact, Bobby, that those guys are not going to keep a dude like Jalen Phillips off the field. Well, and Adam says this a lot too, but 40 point games don't just happen. You know, one sack a game could just happen for a guy who rotationally comes in. That's great. You got your 10 point game. That's awesome. 40 point games don't just happen willy nilly. There's 10 of those guys in the league. They especially don't happen a lot for rookies. Jalen Phillips was a rookie edge defender. And something that we are learning to do on this podcast and that we're getting better at is to understand that pass rushers take time. You don't see a lot of rookie pass rushers, even Chase Youngs, come out in year one and put up 40 points a game, put up 25 points a game, um, you know, put up multiple sack weeks in a row. Um, Jalen Phillips has the metrics. He has the opportunity. All those other guys are Jags. Emmanuel Ogba is going to help him yeah. some. Opposite to him, Ogba will be fine. Trey Flowers is nothing. Don't worry about any of these other guys. Um, Jalen Phillips snaps are going to be him, up. Send him a thank you note. Absolutely. Awful nice of him to lower that ADP. So true. But I love Jalen Phillips. I think that like we've all kind of come to a cumulative agreement on, I think he's going to be the edge that you wanted out of that 2021 class. And here's the thing, too. If we're going to die on a hill, I want to die on a hill with a player that I actually believe is talented. Let's go. And that even if he doesn't have the opportunity we want right at this second, he can yep. capture it. Yep. That guys who did not perform in their first season are not set in stone as far as what they can be for their NFL career, that guys can improve. Mm -hmm. And so give me the dude with the drum beat with the measurables, and with the potential to seize a massive opportunity. Top 12, I will give you that. That is spicy. That's my spiciest. That's I was going to say, if you were ramping up in terms of the heat, that sure. was your ghost pepper that was right the there. That spiciest, no doubt. Mm. Also, so. you know, we see these projections all the time. I mean, projections are whack as hell. Yeah. They really are. Like It's, it's like the... They're the safest, most bubblegum thing out. Like, I look at these projections, and I'm like, oh, TJ Watts projected for 13 seconds. Get out of here, dude. <laughs> Get out of here. That's not helping anyone. Yeah. And to project Jalen Phillips for 600 snaps, I think Mike Clay did, that helps zero people. Mm -hmm. You're missing out on an elite player, potentially, mm -hmm. because you're worried about a rotation with Trey Flowers and Melvin Ingram, both over 30, both haven't been relevant in how long? Three, four years. What are we doing? Long time. What are we doing? Be what bold. Are doing? Be bold. That's what this episode's about. We want to be bold. We want to be spicy. Jalen Phillips, top 12, Bobo. You know I love it. And I love this next guy as well. Talking about dudes that mm. we have heard on this podcast before. Mm. We are talking about saving Christmas with perhaps your favorite player in the NFL. Take us home with your final flag plant. Well, it's time for a little scheme busting. <laughs> Ernest Jones is going to play over 60% snaps in 2022. I also love that we have, you did this last year with Randy Gregory. It was not a finish prediction. Mm -hmm. It was a, I think you had him as Best year of his career. I think, mm -hmm. I think it was a, maybe a sacks prediction. And then you had mm -hmm. like a, a Xavier McKinney vaults into the elite tier of safety. This is kind of along those same lines, Bobo, of like not calling for a particular finish. Yeah. But he's going to meet a snap threshold that I think a lot of people would say is inconceivable at this point. Look, this right here is why you're listening to the show or watching, I guess, possibly. Ernest is an example of what the IDP podcast is all about. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to 2019, the beginning of this show, and tell you about the players that you would have missed out on if you hadn't listened. You would have missed out on the early days of the Big Three where Adam traded for Fred Warner in 2019 when Fred was still somewhat of an unknown and definitely wasn't seen as a top 10 NFL linebacker. You would have missed out on my early breakout calling Minka Fitzpatrick as a safety one in 2019. You would have missed where Josh went and acquired Devin White before his rookie LB3 campaign in 2020, I think it was. It was a while back. You would have missed out on Adam calling Brian Burns an elite edge in the NFL prior to the 2021 season and that Brian Burns would take a big step forward. So this begs to ask the bigger question of why are you here? Why are we here, Bobo? What's this all about? Is it because you enjoy the personalities that are Adam, Josh, myself? 
Adam, it, the camera is not on you. <laughs> is it because that you think it's that we're thing. goofy or, or fun idiots that don't mind making fun of ourselves? We are. Or is it for our fire IDP takes? Our fire fast food takes as well. I would say that you're here for a little bit of all those reasons. Mm -hmm. Look, we're here to have fun. We're here to entertain you guys. We love talking football, and we love making projections. Are we going to be right about all of them? Yes. Nah. Every single one. Not all of them. But as the famous Michael Scott once said, that the actual great Wayne Gretzky once said, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And that's what this right here is. It's an entertaining take. It's an educated take. And it's one that I am going to enjoy rooting for while I watch my Rammies play in 2022. Will this over 60% snap share come to fruition? I don't know, but I sure hope so. And I'm going to have one hell of a good time doing so, just like you are listening to this podcast. I feel like we should just sign off right there. Like, uh, be good. Good luck this week, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna sign off now. We'll see y'all. <laughs> see y'all in another life. I'm gonna pray for every one of y'all. Okay. Oh, no, Addy, this is one of those like Jalen Phillips. I feel like we're ending with the two spiciest here because I feel like if you put this question to folks like John Macri, like Trip, Johnny the Greek, all those guys, you're like, hey, which of these two do you see as most likely? Jalen Phillips, top 12 edge, Ernest Jones, 60% of snaps. I think they take Jalen Phillips. I think the IDP community just has it in its mind yep. that it is inconceivable Ernest Jones could play anything resembling a full-time role in 2022. And um, that's probably the smart money bet. But I like having a little bit of fun with players that we really like. And there are some signs there. If you listen to smart football people talk about this Rams team, I think – they are going to have some fun with how they deploy Ernest Jones this year. I mean, what do we do on the show? We bet on talent mm -hmm. and we have, we look at profiles and we look at college production and breakout age and all this stuff. And I mean, Ernest Jones is, is someone that we're obviously going to like. And we've seen, we've already seen him produce in the Super Bowl. We've, we've heard the stuff all off season about how they're probably going to use him more. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. We're going to bet on guys like that. I mean, if we miss okay. It's not going to really hurt us that much. Like what Ernest Jones ADP is what LB 40 at this point. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're what talking are you about, losing uh, out on? Mm -hmm. A lot of these people that tell you to stay away from these types, like they're not drafting. Like mm -hmm. they, they, they're not clearly, in these streets. Mm -hmm. They're not in these streets out here drafting. Like it, that does not hurt us. That's no sweat off the back. But not only do you have someone that maybe he does play 70% of the snaps. Maybe he does buck this scheme. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's also probably the most valuable handcuff in the game. I was going to yeah. say, Bobby what if Wagner Bobby down. Wagner gets hurt? Yeah. You just got yourself a league winner. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Not a spring chicken, folks. We love Bobby Wagner. He's a lot of folks LB1 for this season, and for good reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but what happens if the 32-year-old doesn't stay healthy? That's right. Mm -hmm. What if he just misses, say, uh, a handful of games? Literally mm -hmm. all of y'all out there in IDP land missed out because you're worried about this guy not playing a certain amount of snaps. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm I hope, willing. I hope, he, I hope Wagner stays healthy. I don't exactly. Want to <laughs> we don't want B Wags to get hurt. This is more a bet well, yeah, on. Uh, but it's just the facts. No one ever mentions. Everyone's always telling you, oh, Ernest Jones isn't going to play this amount of snaps. But what about if something happens to Bobby Wagner? Yeah, I think it's like we talked about with Jace. Don't pay LB1 or LB2 prices for You're Ernest not. Jones. But that's the thing. In no world are you paying those this prices. This is your LB4 or 5. Exactly. This if is a upside play. Again, another thing all these guys have in common. Upside. That's what we care about, dude. We can hit singles, doubles all day long. No one cares about that. We're trying to win leagues. We're trying to win. And how do you win? You win with those outliers. Mm-hmm. You win. These people, with, are, these people aren't out here winning. Mm -hmm. like, That's right. That are given if they're not winning. Yeah. Who did the the champion in our league last year, Bobo? Who did he have? Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. He had Leonard Fournette. He had James Conner. The outliers mm -hmm. who help you win championships. And hopefully, who did he beat? <laughs> I didn't want to go there, but we uh, had to bring it up. Yeah, Addy was runner up. Hey, he's in the championship. All right, I got That's there. right. It's you got to get there. there. It's very hard, hard to, get, to there. get there in this league. So hopefully this flag plant episode was enjoyable. And if you're one of those guys who still has a draft coming up tomorrow, you wait till literally the very last to do your draft. Maybe there's still time to grab some of these guys in your draft and win your leagues because 
We are. We are swinging for upside. And what do you, what home run hitters have a lot of strikeouts. So are we going to get all these right? No. But this is a yes, group of nine players that I sit here with a lot of confidence. There's not any of these players that we've put out here tonight that I'm like, boy, we are just doing this to start a conversation. Hey, Feel good about this list. You have these players on your team. You're going to have a freaking good year. You're going to have a good time doing it, too. You, you didn't have to overdraft anyone on this list. Not a yep. single player. You I know mean, who you didn't hear? You didn't hear Miles Garrett. You didn't hear Roquan Smith. Micah Parsons. You didn't hear Jamal Adams. That's not what we're here for. Very country there. Yeah. You were fired up tonight, and I love it. This is pretty that's pretty hype. Some I'm, piss and vinegar mm -hmm. here. It's at annoying. The, it's just annoying. Yeah. It's it's honestly annoying sometimes to to navigate this Folks, stupid space. Don't be afraid to have fun playing fantasy yeah. football. Yeah. Yeah. Just have some fun. That's all we're saying. And that's why we're here. We're gonna help you have some fun. We're gonna help you win your leagues. Like I mentioned, we got Addy and Johnny coming up on Friday. Y'all don't want to miss it. They're going to walk through the matchups from week one. It'll Johnny's, probably be a four-hour episode. It's going to be a four-hour episode. Johnny's going to talk cornerback streaming options. Check out the IDP shorts that we did with Johnny this week, talking through some of his favorite matchups from week one. But he's going to go through and give you all the goods for every matchup. So make sure you tune yep. into that. We'll be back next week. We're going to recap every week for y'all. And we're going to preview every week for y'all. So me and John Macri will be back next week. Get on board. It's here, y'all. We Get did on it. Board. We Come finally on. made it. The NFL season is right around the corner. We got Bills mm. Rams on Thursday. We got more room. And Get then, on board. You're going to be left behind, Bo. Hitch to the wagon. We Come ain't on. going nowhere. We are we on room. a wagon or are we on a train? Are uh, we on camels? All of it. All of it. <laughs> it's all on it together. Bring it all. Oh. Well, hope you all enjoyed this episode. Make sure you subscribe, theidpshow.com. Make sure you subscribe to the Audible. We are pumped to do those episodes with Sigmund Bloom this season. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all being on this train. The numbies have been insane. And it's just awesome. It's really fun it's to tight. watch this game that we love so much grow in popularity, and we're happy to play a small part in that. And uh, the best is yet to come, Eddie. It's very cool, man. I mean, as much as we love fantasy football and, and, and all that it is, I mean, growing a brand and doing fantasy content, boy, that has been so much fun. So much and fun. getting the feedback from the folks, and people seem to rock with it. I mean, the numbers tell us that they're you guys are rocking with it. Yeah. So we ain't stopping. Um and we're just going to get better. I mean that. So if if you're if you don't like us, if you hate on us, if whatever, you're going to be upset because we ain't stopping. Hey, we ain't but, stopping. But keep listening. That's yeah. right. We know you listen. <laughs> we know we're we know that we're the damn influencers around here. We get it. All right. Before these keep two up the good work. Heads pop off their shoulders. Let's have a little sugar daisy. Take us out, folks. We will see you all on Friday.